Hello all, welcome back to Roll for Chaos here with all these lovely, wonderful individuals uh, who some of us haven't seen in a while, but, uh, you know, two <clears> weeks <throat> at a time. Wait, well, one of us missed two games. That's like, what, a month and a half? Yeah, Benning's God. Yeah, Benning's God. We're glad to have you back. I did not Ryan. realize what time it was. <laughs> I was milking the cows. <laughs> Uh, so we are here now to provide to you this game that we've been playing for a well, little while now. This is session four of Hell Riders. We're going to go around the table, as usual, at random, and uh, we're going to get just a little bit of an update on, on who these characters are and where their heads are at. But before we do that, I will go over what happened last time for everybody to know. So our entire crew here has uh, either been living in or arrived in Baldur's Gate not too long ago, uh, ran into the fist and some problems in the city. They realized that there's some murders going on in town. There's some weird, weird shady shit surrounding that. And, uh, and the guild is not too happy about it. There's shipments that have gone missing. There's a gemstone that came into Wistelar's possession that seems to be important. There's... Uh, some sort of secret doors under the underground in the sewers that some cultists might have been using. Uh, basically, the Fist enlisted everybody to go and figure out more about cult activity and potentially knock it out and get rid of it for a 200 gold uh, reward for each one of you, um, if you can achieve that goal. And had given them an informant by the name of Tarina at the Elf Song Tavern to go speak with and uh, and figure out more about where they might find this this cult and what they might do with them or do i mean we already know what they're going to do with them most likely although you know it's D, &D. anything can happen anything's possible <laughs> but i'm going to assume murder probably that's probably what's going to happen uh along the way we ran into new friends and uh new foes uh trina had uh some enemies that decided to come and try to kill her. It turned out to be a sting operation for the Fist, thinking that maybe you'd soften up the pirates so they could arrest them, but instead you killed a bunch of them and they got everybody outside. Uh, you all escaped with Trina with her nearly dead and, uh, and, and rushed into the sewers, made your way over to, to Shressa's Caress, which is where Thulmaris works. And uh, everybody else was enlisted in a job because they didn't want to pay the exorbitant price of 100 gold per night per individual. Uh, that and at least two of us, forward. yeah. At least two of us think Ness also works there. Yeah, Ness, yeah. Ness uh, also works there, and for some reason she's working in the kitchen instead of anywhere else. But that's fine. It's a noble profession. Mm -hmm. Kitchenry is noble. You're right. Chefs uh -huh. are important. Well, do you want to eat off of dirty dishes? I don't think so. <clears throat> no, that's that's true. Uh, dishwashers are woefully. Um, under-recognized. Agreed. So, uh, we're going to go around and figure out where your character's head is at since the events of the last game. And uh, we're going to roll it random. The first one to go this time is going to be Bennings. You're up first, Lol. Why don't you give us your, your little spiel? Tell us who you're playing and, and where Lil, uh, Bennings' head is at at the moment. What's he doing even right now? Bennings has found himself in quite the predicament, but he's putting on a brave face at Shress's caress. Um, he's about to pick a client to satisfy for the night, shall we say, to put it delicately, in order to pay for his room, which is really expensive because Tarina was with us. And um, Bennings is pretty good. I mean, he met a really hot lady who he really liked. He feels responsible for saving her. Um, <laughs> and... Um, He's, he's doing okay, but he's also, you know, he was out of his element in this city, and now he's somewhere, like, super foreign. I mean, I don't know. Bennings, Bennings is, he's putting on a tough face. He's kind of going with the chaos at this point, seeing where he winds up. And he just leveled up, so he's a little more powerful now. And, uh, Why don't you describe for us, to... describe for the audience, Bennings 90. Bennings 90? Oh, his nice. <laughs> what you wearing, girl? So, Bennings uh, had to go get a, a Roll performance. costume on for the night. OOTN. Um, and uh, he's got a really, you know, silky nighty that's just tight over his massive chest. Got these two tiny little spaghetti straps that come down, and it's nothing but hairy legs coming out the bottom. So he's just feeling not as confident as he wants to as he approaches um, a bunch of uh, 
shall we say, promiscuous individuals. So um, <laughs> Bennings is, he's strutting his stuff. He's going to get that money, do or die. Right, Marquise? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to move on from there over to a star. To Brian, your turn. I don't really know how I could follow that, but uh, <laughs> hey, everybody. I I'm Atomic. Uh, uh, some people call me Brian. Some people call me Atomic. Some people call me things you can't air on the internet. But uh, I do TTRPG stuff, uh, but I here I am playing with Stellar or with Stell to their friends. Uh, when we last saw them, they were... Uh, running back to their shop due to some news they got from uh, their lovely companion, Opal. And uh, they're kind of all over the place. Uh, it's It was kind of a blessing in disguise because it kind of grounded them from going from like, aha, funny funny stuff that's happening to, oh my God, my entire family might be dead to, okay, I, I can focus on work right now. I can, Let me just ground myself. Let me get through this. So it's been, they're in a, for them, they're in a weirdly, like, you know how when some, someone gets calm, it means that they're in their worst? It's that. Like, they are normally so big and so bold now that they've shrunk and they're just, like, hyper-focusing on something because it's what they need to do to, like, move forward. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good to know where you are. We're moving a lot right along to Gwen and Willamy. Hello, everybody. My name is Gwen, also known as McSherry, and I play our resident bard, Willamy. Um... Willamy's had a, a big day. Uh, she she got to perform with her inspiration, her mentor, if you will, and uh, mellowed everything out. Uh, they were interrupted by this this elf chick. I don't know. Ghost elf singing is just so overdone these days. <laughs> uh, so ghost. Then, so so fourteenth exactly. dr century. Exactly. But she's super excited that she got to perform and that it was well received. And then she got to go upstairs and actually prove somewhat helpful in a fight, which I think for a bard is is surprising. It's goals. Exactly. Exactly. And now here she is at Charessa's Caress. She's heard of it for years. And now she actually gets to uh, be here and have some fun. Uh-oh. Camera disconnected. Oh, there it's back. Uh, I'm looking forward. You still have a performance to make of your own at Charis's Crest. I you do. happen to be in the uh, main room in the commons getting ready to, to put on a show as well. We'll see how well you do and what that might earn you. Um, moving on from there, Shannon and Ness. Hi. Oh, that's my microphone and, and my elbow. I'm Shannon. I'm playing Ness Blackwell. Um... What was the prompt? I got distracted and my computer decided to fall, like, off of the face of the planet. That's unfortunate. The prompt was just, uh, where's Ness's head right now? What she's oh. thinking about where she's at. Um, right now, I think she is undetermined. Excited, uh, to, to go, uh, do the things. And these are very interesting people. Um, and excited to show her superiority in every way to, um, to Infernus and uh, Thomaris, and um, yeah, you know, you know, it's true. Uh, yeah, um, waiting to see what happens. <laughs> waiting to see what happens. That's waiting. what this whole episode's about. Um, Valen and Clint, your turn. Yeah, so I'm playing Valen, the elf paladin. He is, I mean, we just had this huge fight and we were able to get some really good information. And also, um, the singing elf lady, well, she was singing to none other than me in the room. So, <laughs> <laughs> and revealed some stuff to me that, uh, well, this made me have some hope that Valen was much needing in that time and moment. So, I think he is feeling hopeful and he is still very determined to figure out where Darian is, and um, well, he frankly uh, didn't want to sell himself, as I don't think that would be the paladin thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Not his usual mo, no. So depend I depend on your patron. <laughs> <laughs> so I was washing some dishes in the back. Mm -hmm. We'll see how good you you do. You'll get to choose between washing dishes 
uh, serving oh. individuals or janitorial uh, or sous chef. Uh, so janitorial sous chef or oh. so you'll get you'll get oh, a okay. choice. Uh, I like choice. Moving right along to Thol slash Inferno, Marquise, your turn. Hi, everybody. I'm Marquise, uh, sometimes known as Barty Time Online, uh, your internet ex-boyfriend. I have notes. Um, because Thulmaris is currently experiencing a massive headache, and I can't imagine why he would be. <laughs> I can't imagine that that might uh, result in unforeseen consequences uh, and powers mm -hmm. that... Uh, might uh be a problem or a boon down the line who knows um but also is kind of how would you say ecstatic that he gets to watch everyone else in his element so he gets to watch a bunch of people be uncomfortable doing what he's really good at uh <laughs> what he's been trained to do um and yeah, it's also just like gonna try to help them succeed as best he can, um, because a rising tide raises all ships. Of course, rising tides. Anyway, uh, we'll move right along to the game then, uh, and we're gonna start off today's events figuring out where the hell Wistelar was and why. They Where were in nowhere. the world was Whistler this whole time? <laughs> so uh, we have you walking across town, Whistle. Uh, Opal at your side. A little bit of a hurry in the step. Worried about what might have occurred. Obviously, this is your your entire livelihood. This is kind of everything that you want to be and have wanted to be for a long time. Um, the sun's not quite noon in the sky. It was still relatively early morning when you had gotten across the bridge, made your way into town, all that kind of thing. Um, as you approach your shop from the east, this is a bit past the Sorcerer's Sundries. It's, uh, it's on the western side of town, just beyond the, the bay. Um, you notice the front of your store currently surrounded by a few curious onlookers kind of watching. There's a small contingent of Flaming Fist mercenaries standing just outside of it. The front door is ajar. The window, the display window in the front is completely shattered. There's pieces of glass scattered, um, uh, somewhat outside, but most of it seems to have gone in, like someone smashed like straight through it. And uh, the thing you notice, of course, first is just the the fist standing outside. There's a there's a human out there, a burly middle aged man with a heavily scarred face, um, a half orc, and uh, a young woman human, who is also just kind of standing about as you approach. Um, the the scarred faced one kind of looks up at you. Uh. Place is off limits. Um, uh, unfortunately, I'm the proprietor of this establishment. I actually own that uh, storefront. Oh, you're, you're Whistler. Yeah. Huh. Uh, yes, and I, I heard the news while I was across town. Yeah. I apologize for taking so long. Hey, no problem whatsoever. I mean, it's just about every day in Baldur's Gate that someone decides they want to help themselves to another person's wares. Yours is just the latest. <laughs> Unfo yeah, unfortunately, it's kind of, it comes with the territory, right? Mm -hmm, um, absolutely. But is it's... there anything you can tell me? Is there anything I can help with? I, I know it's still fresh. Well, I mean, we found it like this. No one claims to have saw anything. There's not... A whole lot to go off of. He kind of like tilts his head, and you see one hand move forward slightly. Like maybe if someone were mm -hmm. to pitch in a little bit, they might be willing to do more of their job. You know, Wait, there's I... a lot that happens on these streets every single day, and we don't always have time to deal with every single result. As long as nobody's in danger, there doesn't seem to be any present danger here. What I know just from my time here, like what an appropriate greasing the palm is in this situation. Um, usually uh, a few gold coins will get you pretty far. I mean, if you want somebody to do some sort of in-depth treat you special type thing, we're looking in the tens mm -hmm. of gold pieces. Okay. So I'm going to uh, grab, uh, you know, reach out, grab their, take their hand with, two hands to kind of like mm -hmm. flip it up so his palms uh facing up and just like uh, you all do such uh such honorable things for our fair city and i couldn't 
imagine what you all go through on the day to day, and it only makes sense that you would need some support from us to make sure that you can do that, and I'll leave in his palm a bag of ten gold pieces. He takes it, feels the heft of it, pockets it without, you know, just kind of looks around and makes sure nobody else sees. He's like, oh, you know, the things we do for the citizens in this town, we... We do it for you guys, for each one and every one of you around. Uh, everybody else, please stand back a little ways. Uh, we have an investigation ongoing here, and we don't want you to muck any of it up. You see a couple of his other uh, lieutenants like move about and start scattering people. He's like, all right, all right. Mm. That's more like it. So uh, we're going to take a closer look around as well, but feel free to enter the building. Just try not to, to touch and move anything. And... We're going to go do a little more questioning uh, if you want to take a look inside first. Uh, yes, uh, of course. I, um, has anyone looked to see if anything's been, like, what's been taken or what the damage that's, is on? Uh, that's going it... to be on you to determine and discuss. Uh, that'll be easier for us to find out from someone who knows what stock you had to begin with. Uh, and then, uh, course, and then we can we can make some recommendations on where you might find said products or, or where we can at least take a look to find those for you. Of course, of course. Uh, so uh, I'll just like kind of like bow my head and kind of like slowly, you know, open the door and just like walk inside and just take like a uh, as know, you take in the scene. As you open the door, there's a <laughs> scraping of glass and and shattered uh, pieces of furniture and things around there that kind of moves out of the side. Opal floats over to to your your elbow basically and kind of hovers there for a second, master. Eh. Why did you deal with that guy? He's an asshole. Just like the rest of the fist. Extortion. Huh. Really? It comes with the territory, and if we want, um, if we want any form of help on this, it's the only way to really Yeah, you know what else it, gets so... people going? Hot coals under their toenails. Look, we can do that to the person if we find someone connected to this, and I will, you know, you could, you know, if you want, you can make Cisco bobs out of their eyeballs for all I care. But for right now, going through the channels, unfortunately, these are the channels, and most of the time they take some type of monetary value to get the wheels going. Um, so right now, we'll we'll use them for what they are, pawns to help us, you know, get further, and uh, then the real fun begins, right? So, um, right, right, let's, right. Um, if you wouldn't mind, if you could be a deer and just kind of, um, my head's not really here right now. Could you... Uh, Kind of just look around, go to the uh, special spots, and just make sure uh, if we can figure out what's exactly been taken. Yes, yes, very well, Master. Uh, let's hope it's not Thank as you. bad as it looks. Uh, let's hope. So you walk into the shop, and the entire interior is in disarray. There's smashed jewelry cases, mm. uh, scattered glass shards, like I said, all over the place, and mm. displays that have just been completely displaced, knocked over, kind of scattered about. It's like a tornado went through here. Not a single case seems to have been left intact. Um, you have a few surviving <sighs> lamps, some of them tilted at weird angles that are kind of flickering, uh, that, are, that are casting the room into kind of some oblong shadows that just gives it an eerie vibe. It's like someone walked into your house and just shat all over it, and now you have to deal with that. Um, mm -hmm. As you step gingerly over the broken glass inside, uh, you see Opal, like, flitting from case to case to case. Well, listen, this is a terrible sight. Look at the cases. This is going to take weeks to clean. Opal, like, rushes <sighs> over to some jewelry that's on the floor and starts picking it up a little bit at a time, and just, mm. like, counting. Uh, I'll, I'm probably just kind of standing in the center and just knowing my shop well enough, I'm just kind of like visually trying to like determine what they're doing instead of like touching anything or anything else like that. Mm -hmm. And I'll give try me, to tell... Oh, yeah, go on. Give me an investigation roll and let's see how good you do. Yeah. 15. 15. That's not bad. Um, looking around, you estimate there's probably... 300 gold pieces worth of damage to the to the room um mm -hmm. but as you're looking through everything and as opal is is recategorizing and putting stuff near the cases that it was in nothing seems to be missing yeah that's what i feared um opal sweetheart um could you go check where we were keeping that special order we recently just received you know the spot we don't uh, display publicly. Oh. Back room. Yes, yes, yes. 
Um, you see Opal put away the little uh, ledger that had materialized in, in their hand, just poof, into a puff of smoke, and immediately just flits <sighs> through the room and heads towards the back. Please don't, please don't, please don't, please. Just one last little thing. Opal please returns just... to you carrying a small uh -huh. uh, puzzle box that you have in the mm -hmm. back. For some of your more careful pieces, so it's difficult to get into. Usually hidden away underneath the shelf. And as he brings it to you, the box is open and empty. Mm -hmm. The ruby that you had with the scent of the infernal upon it is missing. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna glance over my shoulder. How much time do I have before I think a fist is gonna walk through the door? Uh, probably like fifteen moments? to twenty minutes, because they're gonna they're uh, okay. investigating everybody outside right now. Okay. Opal, no time to waste is what we're gonna do. Um, take some of the uh, more valuable pieces, um, pocket them, mm -hmm. disappear, and then we're gonna say that those were, that is what was taken. Oh, yes, master. Uh, Immediately starts grabbing. Put the grabbing box back, me. seal it, and uh, that will be the story. So as Opal uh, rushes to do your bidding, takes some objects, hides some things, uh, goes invisible back in the back side of the room and kind of tries to hide from, from prying eyes. I'm going to take out my bottle just, and just to be safe. You open your bottle. And as you do, uh, there is a swirl of earth and gemstones in front of you, and the, the shop starts to rumble somewhat. A few of the cases at the edges of this re-solidify and just back into position as Kazal the Extravagant appears before you. <laughs> oh, You see him, like, moving dust and soot uh, off of his arms. You have the smell of brimstone on him. Like shakes his head and and a couple of little bat like wings like hit the ground still smoking where he had severed them. Oh my goodness, that was a visit. We still are. Uh, what the fuck happened here? Looks like the bullet smashed res through here. I'm not even responding. I'm just gonna like literally like damsel in distress feign into his arms just like and start like breaking <gasps> down just, just like. His massive Dow genie arms just wrap around you in just a warm and comforting hug. And it, it is just like, it's just like pouring down. It's just, I can't take this right now. This is, uh, I can't do this. Uh, please just give me something. Please just give me something. Oh, oh yes, yes. Some good news. Just, what good news, good news. I do have good news for you. Yes, yes. Your parents please. are and your family alive. Yes. They're alive. Oh, it's grand. Oh, Elturel God. was not oh, destroyed. God. It's just in hell. Awesome. Oh. Hold up. Uh, yes. Just. Do you mean like figuratively like the stores in hell or like. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, it was dragged straight into a Vernus first layer of the nine hells through a grand and terrible ritual. Um, I've discovered it uh, required a series of. Uh, Small sacrifices involving uh, infernal summoning stones, typically rubies, um, and then a whole lot of blood sacrifice um, and uh, some sort of connection amongst all the individuals that were part of this ritual. I'm not sure what that part is yet. However, I've got... Uh, I don't know where your family is in hell. I just know that they are there. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Do you know, like, the layer of hell, which circle of hell? Or oh, yes, yes, yes. It's, it's a, it's a Vernus. It's the, it's the first layer. It's just the top. Just the, the scummy bit at the uh, oh, very yeah, top the, of hell. Oh, yeah, the, the spring break of hell. Oh, yeah, yeah that, very that. quaint. Yeah, mm -hmm. very just, yeah, it's very super. Uh, one moment, please. And he's just going to, like, they're just going to stick their, just, just their neck up into the bottle. And you just hear, <laughs> 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 and um, after a moment, it comes back out with a wine bottle just in their lips and just boom. So, um, thank you. Um, do you want to split this or is this just for me? I would love a drink as well. Uh, he like manifests a cup. Okay. Um, would you like so a seat? And he like, uh, and suddenly there's a please, chair behind please, you please. and he just escorts you down into a nice it's, soft cushy chair. Just like it's just like instinctively just falls into it and just like takes a glass, like pours him a glass and just drinks from the bottle. 
so, um, thank Go you on. for that. Um, as useful and as pleasant as always, you know, a nice, warm, pleasant desert breeze on this. Hell yeah, that I've yeah. been finding myself in. Um, so, uh, okay, one thing at a time, one thing at a time. Okay. So, um, so I, I had to come to uh, that conclusion while I was there, of course, that yes, uh, you had recently received one of the same very gemstones, infernally infused, uh, that was likely used in Elturel. Where is it? Um... Is there like a neighbor I don't get along with or something like that? That's up to you. <laughs> I would assume at least uh, this town is pretty terrible. And I would assume as quiet as they are, there's still at least one person just like, we don't need any one of your damn kind making a shop in this, that kind Absolutely. of thing. Absolutely. And they're just going to like form an Elder's Blast and just like shoot it through in the nearest wall <laughs> going in that direction. You just hear like, like someone go, ah, no. And then you hear like, Oh god 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 and you see like a bathtub smash onto the ground from the second floor. Sorry, it was damaged from the break in. You can file a report with the fist. <laughs> um so um I did have it, uh and then this hellscape occurred, and whoever decided to do this made off with it. Um So Okay, um, we need to get that back that gem is more yes. than just a shiny bauble it's immense and immensely dangerous um okay um if do you have a well i've already bribed the, the lovely people outside so i can have their help obviously we can't be completely forthright with them um otherwise they're gonna ask questions i don't wish to answer right now so um uh i have a few contacts i have a few ideas about who to speak with so uh, i you want I will me to start keep chasing this down. Yes, you figure out okay. where that gemstone is gone. I wouldn't mind having one in my collection, as a matter of fact. I'll give you a prize if you bring it to me. However, of course, of course, I have a friend in the celestial courts I would have a conversation with. Mm, they owe me for a game of three dragon ante that I haven't collected yet. Um, keep an eye out while you're here as well for any cult-related, sacrifice-related, or ruby-related activity beyond your own. Um. Of course. I mean, it's a, a a specific kind of cult, or like just any. I mean, we have I to mean, know that I, you got to keep an eye on all the all. cults. I've always said that you never know where the danger might come from, and it's good to know who your opponents are. It's also a lot of paperwork, and but you know what? Well, I think you're up to the task, Whistle. You can do well, this. Yeah, he claps that, you on the shoulder. Ah, uh, easy, dear. I'm delicate. I um, know, I know. Soft, like, hand rub on the shoulder suddenly. You're the suddenly. sturdy one here. I am the pretty face. Um, Aren't you right? But, well, I'm the gem on your finger, so let's just make sure that just don't scratch the goods, okay? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. And plus, you know, cultists, they're relatively ostentatious. I sometimes am... if you get if you get the god right, you can sometimes make a decent profit just off of the, well, kind of the costume jewelry. That's true. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what? Everything's an opportunity. I would just 100%, be really concerned 100%. because I don't want to have to visit you in hell uh, as a residence. So if what I'm thinking is potentially being recreated, Baldur's Gate could be in a similar situation to El Torel soon. Ta-ta for now, and uh, be well, beautiful. And you just... You too. And your chair disappears yes. immediately when he's gone. Always forget it. Always. At least it doesn't go through scales. Ow. Son of a... Ah. <laughs> uh, just... Ah. Uh, I like these clothes. Uh, well. All right. Uh, press the dissertation. <laughs> and just start slowly just taking it out and just finishing the bottle while they wait for the fist to come back through. A few moments later, uh, the sergeant comes inside. So, um, there was a... Few individuals who seem to see some dark hooded characters. It was real early this morning. Uh, came outside of your storefront. Uh, from what I understand, they didn't know exactly where your place was. They seemed to be uh, following some sort of trail. They one of them used a, a magic uh, detection spell, I believe, out in front of your shop. Um, 
neighbor said that they then just started breaking in to try to find what they were looking for took a few minutes they were afraid to come out and deal with anything obviously they looked a little dangerous and they probably just didn't care um and uh they didn't leave from the front they went out the back no description of the perpetrator at all just some kind of shadowy figure it was a couple of humans um one of them only got a good look at the uh, right side of one of their faces they happen to have a, a real a bulldog-esque jowls um probably balding from the the look very large forehead wrinkled maybe middle-aged male human uh standing about six feet tall that's that's about as much as we've got okay well um you mentioned uh detection magic and well uh um you know i'm a small store so i take clientele of all over the place and i recently took in a, a special order um for um, a set of jewelry that the the client wished to have imbued with um you know some um minor magical effects you know extra radiance glowing as someone walked into the room that's the flowing of some air so they, i don't i don't need to know the look details look just head, just you know. give me what you need uh, uh, private door come over here uh do you got a quill and, and some paper yeah, uh, take down a report mm -hmm. from Wistelar here and uh, mark down everything that was taken, and we'll go mm -hmm. back to the headquarters. We'll do a little investigation. We'll see if we can find out where these individuals went, and if we find your items, we'll return them to you. Perfect, and uh, I'll give them... Uh, the report I give is basically the exact order the Admiral had, mm -hmm. but I'm just going to use that as what was locked in the box and that the rare gem that they provided uh, i had imbued with these light and magical effects for their uh, specific requests and that uh, that would be the reason why they use magic to detect it okay now, they don't even really care enough to force you into a role yeah. here they just write it down um and then uh, the sergeant just claps you on the shoulder and goes you do good work around these parts and you keep your nose clean so we appreciate that uh we will uh we'll see what we can find out and we'll be in touch all right. Thank you very much for your hard work. You're welcome. And you see, like, as he turns and walks with the other fist members, a few gold coins are being passed out amongst them. Yeah, I hope you choke on whatever ale you buy tonight. All right. Opal. And we're, I'm just going to start, like, I'm going to go as far as my prestidigitation can to speed up this process. Mm -hmm. I know it's not, like, fixing but basically just to, like, clean up, and then, like, the damage is a later thing. Absolutely. So it's, like, yeah, and then it's, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to talk to some people locally um, with the remaining gold I have just so I could get, you know, you know, pay a couple of, like, the dock hands and things like that that I have connections with to be like, hey, can you board up my shop um, just so that I can leave it and not worry about further break-ins and things like that, maybe, you know. Pay a couple um, people to just to keep a lookout and stuff like that. So give me a uh, persuasion roll, and we'll see how how little you can get away with financially uh, without having to. Let's see how you do. Seventeen. Seventeen's great. So you have a few uh, individuals that live nearby that are uh, you wouldn't necessarily call them friends, but they're more than acquaintances. They're neighbors that you know mm -hmm. you have a good reputation with, and a few of them come in and immediately start boarding up your windows while you're press digitation cleaning up the shop and, and repairing it as best mm -hmm. you can there's parts and pieces that you just can't fix um so it's in disarray but it's significantly better and in roughly the same places mm -hmm. as before and uh they offer to keep an eye on the shop make sure nobody else breaks in for a while um okay now you have to decide where to go the an object right. such as this ruby is likely to gain attention um pretty much mm -hmm. anywhere that it shows up or appears. And there is one person you know of that's an informant about financial attention. Yeah, uh, Loreth is the best person I could think of in this uh, moment. So I, uh, we've done certain levels of, uh, let's just call them exchanges, uh, mutually ben uh, beneficial exchanges in the past. Uh, so I'm going to uh, track them down in the ways that, well, I'm not, one for their business but they've given me a few methods just to find them or get into contact with them if and when i need to okay so uh as you mentioned as you just like breathe the word loreth out opal goes uh not that swindler you really want to go talk to loreth again 
He's the best person I know that's crooked enough to have uh, some ear out for this type of dealing. They might not know of it, but they might know someone who knows of it. So uh, yeah, beggars can't be choosers. Yeah, yeah. Well, at this time of day, what is it? Just a little past noon? Yeah, he's probably drunk at the Lowland. <sighs> I bet you we could find him there. Yeah, most likely. Um, he's uh, usually one for a pint. So uh, let's make our way and we'll head on over. All right, two of you strike out across town to go to the low, ran low, low lantern and find that person. Um, at this point, we're going to jump forward a little bit because by the time you arrive there and meet up with him, it'll be roughly or pretty close to the time uh, that uh, this is happening with your other crewmates. Benix, you and uh, Thelmaris. Uh, oh, yeah. Find yourselves in the comfortable waiting area of Shiresa's Caress, where clients can relax before their appointments. Uh, the space is furnished with overstuffed armchairs and sofas, covered in rich mm -hmm. fabrics of deep reds and golds, various patterns upon them. The lighting is dim and soothing, provided by wall sconces and table lamps nearby with soft amber shades. A selection of refreshments, including herbal teas and chilled water infused with slices of cucumber and lemons, is available on a side table. Uh, and, of course, we happen to have Willamy sitting there on the side, tuning their instruments, whatever you are choosing to play, uh, getting prepped at the moment. There is a few incense uh, sconces in the room as well that are just sending out a lot of, um, we're going to say comfortable vibes. There is a small amount of opiates in the incense that allow everybody to relax a little more deeply than usual. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> mm. <laughs> And uh, Thelmaris, you're standing there beside uh, Bennings. We're going to start with two of you. We're going to go over and see what Willamy does. Um, and you're going to show Bennings the ropes to a degree, however you feel like that's the best thing to do. Uh, mm. As a reminder, it's common to start up good conversations, agreements on payment before bringing a client to the room. And most uh, engagements start off with a massage. Some people don't want more. Some people <clears throat> really, really do. Uh so I think in this moment, are you wearing the nighty? Is this actually a thing that you're doing? It's his costume. Tyson, is this a thing? Yep. And if so, I do think the audience demands a commission of some sort of artwork. <laughs> um, Bending's what? in a nighty. That, what is this in the comments? Um, yeah, the nighty? That's weird. <laughs> um, $100. So I guess like what you would see Fulmaris in is just like a bunch of um, gauzy fabric in the general shape of an exotic dancer. Hold on. Exotic in the foreign term, not a <laughs> stripper. Um, more like a belly dancer's outfit um, of, like, gauzy uh, fabrics put together. Um, a couple of, like, well-placed jewels at certain areas, and Thule will come over to you and look you up and down. Are you... Maybe sort of is just, like, pulling at the bottom of the nighty, trying to somehow make it extend closer to his knees, and it's not. <laughs> no. Are you certain that's what you want to go for? Uh, there were other options. There, there were other options. There are there are other options, if you wish. Um, have you done this before? I, I cannot say that I have, no. Um, this is my first time in a, what I would consider revealing attire. <laughs> uh, let me rephrase my question. Have you ever enticed someone, wooed someone before? Back where I'm from, it's a little easier than I think uh, this whole get up is making everything seem. You just sort of call out across the farm whenever you want to uh, approach another, and uh, that seems to be the court and ritual. Mm. You, you <laughs> just shout at someone, and you have sex afterwards? I don't know why you're making this so complicated. I... <laughs> I'm from a different land where, um, let's just say things are a bit more delicate. Um, here. And, uh, he'll go and find a different outfit but in that moment i think that this will probably like occur to you because now finally the adrenaline is gone um <laughs> bennings you are a fighter <laughs> and you probably like recognize like oh hey we just came from a fight 
and you get a feel for people and the way that they fight with people. Um, mm. There's something very unnatural about the way that Thul fights. It's not clumsy or unskilled. He knows how to. It's very flashy. It's pretty. It's precise. But those first two, that's what seems unnatural about it. Like he studied to be flashy, despite the fact that that's not who he is. So as he comes back out um, with like uh, with a prince's outfit, he will just say, when it comes to this, when we're wooing here, you don't probably have a good eye for it, but you want to give them what they need. And uh, what is it these individuals need? Every person is different. But a lot of people will tell you what they want. But... It, it might seem easier if I just say what I have to offer. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> certainly one way. Uh, and he'll, like, help you put on the, the prince's garb. Um, there are plenty <laughs> of people... Prince. Why are you princes? Prince prince is, not S. princess. Apostrophe. Not princess. Um, so, wait, I'm not in the 90 anymore. Is that what's happening? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, he, if you don't want to be in the 90, it, but the ones to say, there are people who are going to ask for a very particular type of service from you in that. I don't know if that's a service <laughs> you're willing to provide. Well, uh, I will uh, adhere to the more uh, knowledgeable in this uh, field, Thelmaris, and uh, if that is you, then so be it. Uh, dress me to impress, as they say. Uh, and so these are probably, again, the most expensive clothes you've ever worn in your life. Um, and they, a little bit of, like, careful tailoring, just like a couple of pins in certain places to make it look tighter in areas, but loose enough in others. So... You have a good range of movement. Um, and just, they'll just say, relax. You are I big, you are strong, and there's quite a lot of people who wish to be swept off their feet, literally, by someone like that. So just maybe let your muscles do more of the talking. Do you think uh, Tarina would be upset if I she knew I was uh if if, if she uh if she do you, do you think she would be upset if she knew I was here doing uh whatever nefarious activity I'm about to engage in? I am very confused. Do you <laughs> think you're going to see that woman again? Well, I'm in love with her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh dear. You're how old? I am a twenty. <laughs> we, so, we, uh, we measure uh, by harvest where I'm from, and uh, we mm. have about two harvests a, a cycle. Um, so, you know, it's one of those things. It's a, sort of a chicken and an egg scenario. Uh, yeah. Mm, I feel like you, there's a word called limerence. I think you might be in limerence with her. Where's that? <laughs> limerence is a, it is a deep kind of emotion, one that's spurred very quickly uh, by one who you might be impressed by or overly taken with, uh, but it is not love. You will, uh, and there's like a sad look on Thule's face. You'll learn the difference very quickly. Well, so. Try not to fall know. in love with anyone out there. Mm. Well, I don't know what a, a limosaurus is. However, I will say uh, me and Tarina are in love. But how about we, uh, we move things along? How about we get out there and get this night over with? At some point, I would like to sleep in the bed I'm uh, attempting to pay for. <laughs> Very well. And, like, you'll just see kind of Thulmaris, like massage their temples in the front of their head like there's a bit of a headache to them <laughs> uh and we'll probably just like walk over to willamy all right so willamy we see you setting up at the stage uh it's a it's a very close stage to everybody that's kind of surrounding the outside of it. it's uh like an intimate space if you call it that you know small area um what <laughs> are you doing to set up 
I think she's going to try to recapture the lightning in a bottle that was her earlier performance this evening. Oh, uh, so at she's the, got at the, the Elf song? Mm. All right. Exactly. So she's got the pipes out. She's she's kind of finding the right key for the, the situation because she wants to keep the mellow vibes, but still kind of, you know, move people, if you will. Of course. In that moment, of course, your mind flits back to the events earlier in the evening. Very exciting. There was a, a wonderful form of music that you were making with Catastrophe Jones. And you wonder what happened to Catastrophe, where she's at now. I mean, you were concerned a little bit. You're sure that the, the fist wouldn't have any reason to apprehend her. Although, she does have a little bit of a reputation of being a, a bad girl. I mean, that's just part of being a musician, so obviously. <clears throat> it's true. It's true. So, if you would, as you start setting up, give me a performance roll uh, as you go into your first set, right as Thelmaris is walking in your direction. Perfect. That is a 23. Excellent. So you begin uh, with the dulcet tones building into like a tribal crescendo uh, of sound and, and flurry of action and movement upon the stage. You revisit that kind of heavy music-esque feel from earlier, but performed by one person. And the audience themselves have mixed interests in it to start with. Mm -hmm. But eventually, their foot begins tapping. Some of them begin bobbing their heads. Uh, they just start drinking a little bit more heavily. And off in the distance, you see the mamzelle kind of look over and squint at you as you begin your set. And then when she looks around and see everybody's like enjoying it, she just shrugs and shakes her head and turns and goes back to the counter. Um, no, it's counting for taste. Yeah. Thelmaris, you make your way over, and while this is weird music and not necessarily to your taste, you can feel uh, what it's trying to accomplish and appreciate it for what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it's uh, like the headache is starting to build a little bit more, um, both from the music and from something else, but uh, kind of like flags willing me down for just a quick second. And it's just like, have you ever... Do you know how to play for this kind of establishment? I mean, I've I've never played at an establishment like this before. So I'm just kind of going off, you know, what worked earlier. Ah, so you must be a very new artist. Well, I like to think that I'm I'm a seasoned artist in the woods. Mm. And I'm just coming into my own in, you know, people related centers uh yeah yeah the squirrels love me mm, i can bet uh listen you at least were playing on key this time so i have to give you that um but you might want to the hardest thing an artist can do is tailor their art to an audience this okay. audience you turn might... to look and point at the audience and a well-tailored uh, older man, very uh, silvery hair, very short cropped and kept well, uh, bearing an entirely black pinstripe suit with a small purple rose in it, his skin paler than usual, um, walks over in your direction. And as he approaches, he looks at Willemy directly and says, Good dear, I have to admit, the sounds you were performing, they were... Magnanimous, fantastic. Um, do you perchance do parties? I have a nephew who would love this song. I, I haven't in the past, but I, I could be persuaded, certainly. I I, I'm think just getting my name out. I have a well-connected family that honestly could do much for getting your name out there into the greater annals of Baldur's Gate. And we have wealth. He, like, pats a coin purse at his side that's noticeably heavy. I was Is like Willoughby in danger? <laughs> give me a... Uh... <laughs> an insight roll? An insight on this one. Maybe he just likes her music, Marquise, okay? 14. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna add a d6. Okay. To that for a side bolstered knack for a 17. That's a 17. Versus uh, this character's. 
Mm. Mm. You can tell that the individual was impressed by a new sound they'd never heard before. You can also tell that they're lying about a nephew. Um, and that there is a hunger in their eyes that is a little different than what you witness normally here. Uh-huh. Um... I guess I'll, like... I'll let Willamy take the lead, but if... Yeah, I'll let Willamy take the lead to see uh, what she does. So, what is your response to this this gentleman i mean i'm i'm obviously booked for the evening here but uh if you want to give me a way that i can get in contact with oh, you no problem I, I, i'm someone yeah. who tends to operate and and enjoy the festivities of the evenings deep into the twilight hours i wouldn't mind coming to you after you're done with the set to discuss this in more detail if that's acceptable to you Certainly, I, I will make sure that I have a, a table here that we can uh, discuss it at. Excellent. He puts his hand forward and grasps hold of yours and then just kisses it, your, your, uh, the back of your hand. There's like a tingling sensation that kind of spreads from that for a moment. As he looks up at you, he goes, I look forward to it. And he like turns and walks back into the crowd. I've never had a patron before. Uh, you probably won't if you go with that man. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh. You have agreed to talk to him, so I would suggest at least doing so, but you shouldn't go anywhere alone with him. Everything, almost everything that he said was a lie. Oh my. I would never have guessed. He's very good at that. Many liars are good at that. Many... Predators are good at lying. And just like a headache just like starts to blossom more in their head. <laughs> Once more, headache stretching into the mind. Mm. Um, as your headache starts to build a little bit, you have a weird sensation. Lips brush across yours for a split second. And then you feel someone nearby, and then you realize it's in your head. There's a, a sensation, and it quickly moves into something that gives you a little bit of a stomach ache, a betrayal by someone you love, and it's as gone as quickly as it came on. Are, are you okay, Fulmaris? Did, did that man do something to you? you? You don't look well. That charlatan reminds me of ill times. Um, you are... How old are you, Willoughby? I mean, I'm relatively young. I'm I'm about 90. Young in elf standards. Just please be careful. You are new to this outside of the forest. The bears are no longer the most dangerous things in the woods. Well, at least these woods. It's but men. The bears. It's, it's, it's been the chipmunks. It's not. <laughs> bears. And women and, and woods and men. Let's mm. move on from this. I've heard about it too often today. Anyway. Uh, yeah, but just we'll like give a, a peck on uh, Willamy's cheek and we'll just begin to carouse. Okay. So you go about doing uh, your general business in the caress. It's pretty commonplace for you. And while there is um, like that nagging headache and kind of a, a slight feeling of unease in your mind, you're still very capable. So we move back over to Benny's. Bennings, you're now out in the common grounds. You're in, in the common space, uh, rather, not the grounds. And you see individuals all throughout the room. But there's really only three of them that kind of catch your eye as they are literally looking at you or, or you know, keeping track of you. There's a weather-worn male human in his mid-40s sitting in a plush armchair near the center of the parlor. His attire marks him as a man of some wealth, so, I mean... Decent mark if you want to make some money. His weathered face is framed by a neatly trimmed beard, and his eyes twinkle with a mixture of fatigue and curiosity. He has short graying mm. hair and a tan complexion, indicating many years spent outdoors. He's fidgeting with a small ornate coin purse, occasionally glancing on the room with an expression that suggests he's eager for a conversation. And uh, as he looks over at you, he gives you a nod and a smile that says, 
I'd be in interested. Um, from the position where you're looking around the side, you can see a, uh, a casually seated uh, dwarf male sitting on a low bench near the fireplace nearby, having a little bit of uh, ale and, and chatting and laughing with some other individuals surrounding him. Um, he's wrapped in a warm fur-lined cloak, broad face is marked with worry lines, and uh, has a long braided brown beard that rests heavily on their chest. Um, as they look over to you, you can see that they are casually speaking to everybody else in the room. They're well known here, they've probably been here lots of times. Um, that Im immediately gives you a sense of, okay, this guy's known, he's not likely to be too much of a creep, everybody seems to get along with him. And, as he looks over at you, he gives you a big wink and a smile. Aww. And then you notice in the corner, <laughs> there is a female half-elf sitting in a shadow corner of the parlor off to the side, trying not to be noticed by many others. They have these little privacy curtains that surround these little booths. She's sitting in it with it almost kind of drawn past. Her hood is pulled low over her face, obscuring her features. Uh, from what you can see, her skin is kind of light olive, wood elfy. Uh, a few strands of silver hair kind of escape from under the hood. She's dressed in dark, nondescript clothing that seems designed to avoid attention, but it's very well made. Um, there's a long, dark clo cloak draped over her shoulders, and um, her posture is perfectly still. Like, she's uncomfortable being here. Um, it's almost unnatural, and she makes no effort to engage, like, anybody around her. But as, like, she looks up from under the cowl and looks at you, you see a mixture of... Um, disappointment for a brief moment because she recognized you in your previous outfit and now disapproves of this one um and at the same time uh she looks you up and down appraisingly from some beautiful blue eyes out of those three individuals who would you like to approach Let's approach the uh, red flag. Let's go to the corner. <laughs> I want to be looked at. Uh... As you walk over, you see this um, lady that's sitting there and just kind of watching the room. She reaches down very gently, gra grabs a small glass of wine that she has there and takes a sip of it and then puts it down and puts her hands in her lap as you walk over to the table. Looking up at you, she just looks at your physique. I assume you're... Um... Someone who works here, yes? Well, you would be right in that assumption. Dennings is going to take her glass, and he's going to take a little sip and then put it back in front of her and slide it across. Is Thalmaris in the same room right now? Yes, this is the, the main room. Dennings, not subtly at all, looks over there like, yeah, I got this shit, and does like a really big wink, and then looks back over, like just kind of thinking he's the man right now. <laughs> So the lady looks at you, and she looks down at the glass that you just drank from. And she goes, and she puts her finger on the edge of the glass and kind of rims it with a finger and looks at you and says, You know, I saw you before, and I have to admit, your attire left little to the imagination, which I appreciated. I hope that's okay to say. Well, I've never been one to shy from a compliment, and I dare say... I could return to such state. Should uh, the compensation be adequate? So you're interested. Excellent. She takes the glass and then licks where you drank it from. Whoa. And then takes a drink of the wine. You in danger, right. girl. <laughs> I um, do not know the next steps. I assume I take you upstairs. Would you like me to carry you? Oh, carry <laughs> me? No, I think I think I'd like to lead you to my room. She like puts Ooh, one of her it. dainty hands up, up, upon yours, very massive hand, and uh, steps up very gracefully. And as she grabs hold of your hand, um, she's a lot stronger than she looks. And then she Ooh. like pulls you in the direction of the room. She goes, I assume okay. this will suffice. She reaches onto her coin purse to the side and hands you a uh, a bag of gold. You can tell that it's wait, probably wait. in the like 100 to 150 gold piece range. If you perform um, well, there's more where that came from. Sam Morris! <laughs> um, <laughs> as I see, parlor. as I see this happening, mm -hmm. and I see her from head to toe, mm -hmm. 
Is Bennings about to die? <laughs> Give me an insight check, please. Bennings is his own man with a hammer. Okay. Oh, uh, 12 plus. By accident. Um, inside. Can I count uh, 19, inside? and then I'll just side knack that one as well. Okay. Uh, so 23. 23. So, using insight, you recognize who the patron is. She's rarely in here, but she's a very important person. Uh, mm -hmm. oh, a VIP. She's Lady Aeliana uh, Ravenshade. She works with the council and with the dukes of Baldur's Gate. Um, uh -huh. She's keeping a low profile so as not to be recognized okay. by other individuals. Oh. But if this goes poorly, the Mamzelle is going to be furious. Okay. Bennings will do fine. Have faith. <laughs> okay. Um, also, bring me I, a fucking mighty. <laughs> I will, um... <laughs> I think what happens is, like, two things. Like, Thumaris will immediately see it and will go to two different people. One will go to Willamy mm -hmm. before Bennings leaves the room and just says, Our friend could use a little bit of inspiration so that bad things don't happen to hit all of us. Bitch, you've got this. Uh, give me a performance um, roll, Willamy, and tell me what music you're playing in any way, any genre you want as Bennings I, leaves the room. I, with I would like to like, lady. okay. Oh, I don't need to do that. I don't think a whale, whale. <laughs> <laughs> she, she won't go full 70s porn but she's going to kind of lean into that <laughs> you know just kind of the chicka 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 there you go um, Music and then the second person as you're yeah. making yes. your way out Benning, go ahead. Uh, the second person I go to is Soren mm -hmm. and I just alert him that Lady Ravenshade has gone with our new boy and our new boy may need help uh, he, of a of a of a of a, what's the word I'm looking for of a of a stealthy variety from a stealthy uh, the, person. Mm, yeah, 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 yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, and the Soren just takes off immediately. Perfect. Uh, I can do no more than that. So I uh, will just. I will. I will actually say probably like. Before you like leave a corner, mm -hmm. you'll just see kind of like a Bennings. You'll see like a. A proud like smile on Thul's face, just like, wow! I didn't think you had it in you, but you did good. As you uh, try to save Bennings from himself very quickly and try to aid in whatever way you can, uh, the regular patron actually walks over and grabs your elbow for a second. So, uh, Eldrin Thorn, you've seen him here lots mm -hmm. of times before. Thomaris, so great to see you tonight. You look mm. fabulous, dear. Master Thorn, thank you so much. You are. Uh... Just flush with compliments. How may I help you? Well, you see, I've got this kink. I need worked out. Would you mind mm. assisting me this evening? Nothing could make me happier. He grabs hold of your hand and Thul and, and Eldrin, or Eldrin go walking off together. Uh, we'll come back to Bennings in a moment. Valen <laughs> and Ness, the two of you uh, have moved on towards the kitchen. And as you walk down the little flight of stairs behind the back counters in the bar, um, you have one of the uh, the tavern workers there, like show you where to go. And uh, the two of you step down below, and and pa you get passed off to Joseph Chirizo, the head chef at the Teresa's Chirizo. Caress. Yeah, that's his name. He's even in Baldur's Gate three. Um, He's a spicy sausage. So he looks over. Oh, two more down here. I, I assume you're not here for the playtimes, right? You're here to work? Yeah, yep. The playtimes, play you mean like good. sex I upstairs am, with strangers? Is I that am a perfectly happy married man. I do not want the playtime. So if you're down here for that, you can fuck off. If, however, I do need a few extra hands tonight as it is quite busy upstairs. We've got hands to spare. Excellent, excellent. Too many hands filled with too many things in this establishment, I tell you what. Okay, what are you good at? I need someone to assist me with preparations. I've also got cleanup and I've got serving. Even one of you good with speaking to the people. Get some tips, get some customers happy. Don't drop anything and make me upset at you. 
I, I, I can do that. I'm also really good with the, with knife work. So prep for what, you know, whatever works. No, 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 uh, no, I leave this I up to you. You just give me your best foot forward and we'll see how things go. Do well enough. And maybe you'll get some tips this evening and maybe a nice meal when you go up to your room. So are you saying that I should do the knife work or do the serving thing? I, I are you better you at serving people? Or are you better at uh, cutting things? Yes. That does not help me. Um, I'm going to I, ask your friend it, now. What is she better at? I know you've probably known her for a very long time. Well, in the short amount of time that I've known her, she's uh, quite good at slicing things. Okay, working Aww. in the kitchen it is. Uh, dear, what's your name? Valen. Uh, I was talking to, to the lady. Oh, my bad. Francesca. Francesca, if you would, please, put on that white uh, frock and hat so we can keep hair out of the food. And then I wish you to stand off to the side and allow me to shout at you until we finish cooking things. Are you sure this isn't related to the stuff that goes on upstairs? Because this is Certainly very specific. Not. Um, okay. And you, Elfman, uh, you look weighted down by all of your armor and equipment. You may wish to put your sword and shield aside. Okay, so I put my shield, <laughs> my sword aside. Now, are you I'm good like a soldier at, put a sword down? You good at cleaning things, talking to people? I don't need sous chef anymore. I've got one with this Francesca. I would say I'm pretty good at cleaning. Let's let's stick with the cleaning. Excellent. You can start with the latrines. That bucket over there has all of the goods that you need. Go through the house. And make sure there is no pukies anywhere. We must make sure it's wiped and cleaned at all times, okay? On the second hand, I, uh, I might be very good at talking with people, getting some tips. Tonight. Oh, serving it is then. Certainly much more most people's thing. All right, let's get to it. Uh, the first set of orders that have come in today, we need to get, it looks like a big sausage. And a big sausage, and another big sausage, and a few loaves of bread in the shape of balls. Got it. Let's get started. So, Ness, if you would please uh, give me an athletics roll. How how does one or sleight of hand, whichever's better for you? Prep. Okay. And also, I thought you were going to go with bread in the shape of buns for the sausage, but you went with balls, so that's that's fine. Mm -hmm. Either way is good. Yeah. Uh, you want me to roll what? <laughs> you're rolling sleight of hand or athletics, whichever is better for you. What am I doing, though? Uh, you're going like to be uh, cutting said sausage into the appropriate shapes uh, and to prepare upon a plate for people. And you're going to be, uh, well, mostly grinding meat, putting it into the tube. You, they make everything by hand here. Okay, but I'm my point is so I was checking that out. If you want me to cut anything, I should be I should just be rolling my attack. No. With my daggers on. No, me. you're good yeah. at attacking people, but you're you're using fine knife skills now. It is in excuse hand eye me? coordination. Give me a sleight of hand, please. Uh, One might argue that slicing a sausage is equivalent to attacking a male person. <laughs> I'm not in the slightest, how dare you? <laughs> they don't move. They don't move. No, I, I agree. I agree with Brad. I was going to say it, and, um, and I didn't have to. I so mean, have that. you been in battle, Tyson? They don't just stand there. The yeah. sausage does. Filleting a sausage yeah. of any kind is very similar. Mm -hmm. You got any this. Any amount you got of hip this. movements. Mm, okay. Fine. Or he, you don't. That is a fool. Well, that's what I'm saying. He, he wants me. I, I don't even know what knife I have in my hand. I was just going to do like a, a flourish with my daggers. He's not going to let then... you use things you use outside of the kitchen. You just know how clean Nobody those are. told me not to. <laughs> Did I get a tutorial or orientation here? I don't think so. I yes. just go with what I know. So I'm going to say I'm that just because. I'm cross contamination. Because of your four, uh, you used your pocket knives and they did not work appropriately for, uh, for, for cooking. And you'll, no. you'll, you'll have a... Nope. I did not roll with my dagger, so I had to use whatever cutlery this has. You can't have both of the things. <laughs> okay. Well, the cutlery 
is not what you're used to using. Weird. And unfortunately, the chef's knife, it's weighted funky. You start, you start chopping the bits of, of, of meat and gristle and whatnot that are going to go into the sausage. And unfortunately, uh, it is it is rough chopped. It is not appropriate for, for what's going to be made. Um, but we will figure out what that means later when people start downing sausage. Um, we never established Ness's relationship with sausages, so. It's true. You don't, you have a history. Um. <laughs> You don't know my history with sausages. It hasn't come up. So uh, Chef Chorizo comes over to you about halfway through that and looks down. This is garbage. This is garbage, you biscuit. How can you possibly cook this way and think you are doing good job? I do not appreciate your efforts. Although I have to say extra hands are nice, you happen to be causing me to need extra hands to clean up after your hands. So what did- Listen. I'm gonna go, you want me, I can serve. I'll clean the toilet. This is not actually the job I anticipated because one, you didn't tell me what to do. Two, I didn't get to roll the right die. And three, <laughs> I don't have that experience with sausages that you want, sir. So, Gru, do you want me to stay in here or go and serve? Okay. Get oh, out I'll of my kitchen toilet. and go clean the latrines. Will do. It's cleaner there probably than it is in here. Is that a rat? Excuse me. So you like walk out, you grab a hold of the cleaning supplies. Um, Valen, Chef Chorizo plates some of what is probably sausage, uh, because it's kind of sticking out of the casing in weird ways and is very like chunky. Um, and says, Nobody told me to use the meat grinder, which is actually how you make sausage okay. and not with knives, Tyson. Well, they don't have a meat grinder back then. Bitter so it's, about and all that's of it. not a I'm kitchen. Not, you just had to not. chop it things so like finely, I am, but I'm you know, totally fine not. chopped sausage uh, meat. Anyway. Uh, so he hands it out to you and says, this is to go out to table four, bring it there, apologize if it sucks, and, uh, try to do your damnedest to charm the pants off of them so that it's less work for the rest of those interests caress to remove. Got it? Okay, charm pants. Yes, charm the, no, charm the person so the pants come no, off. Not, that's, oh, that's okay. what we're looking for here. Pants charm person sausage okay so you grab the tray and you move out into the Valen's dining room awesome. and as you step out into there you realize you don't know which tables uh are which number or can i investigate to see who may, might not have food at their table yeah give me an investigation roll let's see if you can figure out who's looking at your sausage and wants it right now oh my this is why this guy needs more hands. Like he does no training of his kitchen staff. Uh, there wasn't any reasonable expectations. I didn't see it. Ooh, okay. It was not a thorough onboarding. <laughs> Nat twenty. <laughs> <laughs> just someone tonight. <laughs> you see someone that's is just that sitting a sausage, there. Or are you just happy to see me? You see Always someone that's just sitting there at the table, looking forlornly at their table, like waiting. You can see them like picking up a couple of crackers that are there and just eating them furiously. And as they look up and see that, their eyes just alight with joy that you have their food. Perfect. I will walk over to them. So uh, the halfling woman that is sitting there at the table with a couple of her friends looks up and goes, Oh! I am so delighted to see that you have my food. Oh, uh, it, uh, you, you just uh, you put it put it down, please. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us at Shrestha's Caress. Here is your dinner for tonight. Oh. It is uh, lively. Oh, I lay it on. The uh, can you four. tell me, uh, just out of curiosity, uh, how is it made? It's I've never seen a sausage in this shape before. It looks really interesting. Yes, our uh, our newest chef, Ness, I mean, Francesca, <laughs> um, did her best to make it look sausage-y. Please give it. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's a little chunky, but I think it'll do. It looks <laughs> meaty. Please give me a persuasion roll. This is what farm to table looks like, people. Okay. <laughs> Seventeen. Do you want to know the name of your chicken? I can tell you the name of your chicken. Well, this is very exciting. I love new things. Thank you very much, sir. And she like grabs your 
just the area on your bicep for a second squeezes and then goes in immediately just dives into the food starts scattering across the table some of her friends are picking pieces of it off um and you walk away from it with them having been contented (laughs) we move back to ness done the impossible ness your bucket and uh your your couple of uh queening cleaning 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 uh, rags and sponges uh, are in hand. It's a little heavy. You move over to the first latrine, and we're going to see how badly it hits you. Please give me a constitution saving throw. Now, the lack of my backstory in any of this is 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 bad, because, I mean, you could have been a fucking ship. Have you gone to the toilets in a boat? It's hard. You think guys miss just standing straight, right? Like, you should do the whatever. What am I rolling? Constitution. Constitution I have cleaned a woman's restroom many times, and there is a distinct difference of how of which one is worse. That is. I true. would say if you were going to go true. with women, it's because they let children in there too. And most of them are boys when you go in there and that they make the mess, but. Not, or the, the hover that don't clean up after themselves. Listen, sometimes you do have to hover because it's I already gross. Hover, but then you clean up after. Mm. I was looking for constitution under skills because <laughs> I'm under, out of it. There we go. I know what okay. it is. A 10. Uh, so middle of the road in this situation, you open the door and it's, there's someone still in there. There is a, oh. a dwarf that's like, l- unconscious laying across the bowl uh basically the 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 wooden stall itself um these rooms are off just outside of the of stress's caress in the back area um and he's just like half asleep obviously overdrank doesn't seem to have made too much of a mess of anything although he has soiled his pants um and is just laying there in a in a pile um Uh, uh, sir? Or, um, hello? <laughs> Tap him a few times. Um, give me a medicine check just to see if you can wake him up. That one's under skills. I will kill you in your sleep. <laughs> I mean, thank you. Night. 19 excellent so you just kind of like reposition him just a little you tap him in the appropriate place to kind of get his attention and you see him just kind of oh what the, where am i you are in a bathroom um sorry in a latrine because a bathroom is a, a modern thing there's no bathtub in here you should be where do you need to be are uh give me you need to go home give me an insight check Twenty-five. You recognize him uh, as Constable. Uh, what is his name? Rem Grey Warden. Um, he is one of the Flaming Fists' leaders, and he's in a compromising position right now after everything that just happened. So he turns and looks at you, and just like you can see, like this angry look across his face, like someone's seeing him in this position. You, you. <sighs> You work here? I do, presently. You will tell nobody, nobody what you just saw. You understand me? Mostly, the slurring is making it a little bit more difficult. Uh So what you're saying is, is that you don't want me to tell anyone that I saw you here? Is that what I'm hearing? Someone shit my pants. Oh, the shitting of the pants. That's what you don't want. How much, um, you know, what, what is it uh, worth to you to perhaps was it for me worth to not me? mention? Yeah, Ugh. you know, he like, like how important. He like goes it? to reach for a dagger and then like trips and falls to the side and then lands in the dirt next to you. So... How'd that work out for you? Look, look, look. I'm looking. I can't look away, actually. Um, here, take this and just don't tell anybody. He hands you a coin purse. How much is it? Uh, 
you have a surmise between like 90 and 100 gold. I'm going to just put that in my pocket <laughs> uh, and then wait a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. So are you going to give me any money or what? I just, uh, well, I just, I thought it was at you for a second. I'm going to have him roll to see, uh, it's going to be an intelligence saving throw on his part. I better have a negative. He should have How drunk it. is this dwarf? He did get it. Uh, I, I'm, I just gave you my coin purse. Oh, oops. <laughs> my bad. It's, uh, the shit fumes. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, um, would you like help? Help me up. I just offered, but now you kind of like, not want to. reaches up with one hand. What is it? It's not got shitty on his hand. Though. No, I mean, there's no. some dirt because he fell in the mud, but That's he doesn't. Fine. Yeah. You help All him right. up. He like struggles mm -hmm. to his feet. He causes the bucket like to slosh that you're holding in the other arm. Um, I put down the bucket. Okay, never mind then. And uh, you help him to his feet, and he kind of stumbles around a little bit, and then just starts walking towards the alleyway nearby, heading out into town. Is there anything left on him to pickpocket? Uh, give me the awareness. Oh, and he's a flaming fist. Is he wearing a badge? He is. I would like to grab that, and then anything else that might be shiny. Okay. But with a pat on the back and ask, you know, I hope you feel better. So give me an awareness roll to see if Drink there's anything flowing. else of, of value upon him. What am I rolling? Sorry, investigate? Uh, yes, it wouldn't be awareness. That's a different game, everybody. That's my game. Um, so this would be... Can I do perception? It would be perception. That is a 21. 21. Um, you notice upon his side, he happens to have a... A small pouch of personable items. There's likely some of his jewelry within it. There's also on his left hip um, a dagger that is radiating magical energy. You're going to have to make a sleight of hand against his uh, perception in order to steal this from him and hopefully not get in trouble. And I'm guessing, again, you are taking into consideration that not only is he slobbering junk, he's shitting Yes, he has himself. disadvantage okay. on his roll. <laughs> Just checking. Okay. So you pocket a uh, knife and you pocket a, a bag full of jewelry. Very lucrative evening. Also, now I have to clean up his shit. So yep. I sigh, grab the bucket, and <sighs> scrub the shit. All right, so we will move on from you there, scrubbing and cleaning the latrine. Uh, bag of jewelry, and we're going to put a magic, magical dagger. You don't really know what it is yet, but you've got it. Where are you putting that? Because I was putting on notes. It's in your what? inventory. Oh, that's way easier for me. Thank you. All right. We will now pop back upstairs to Benix. So, Bennings, you move Bobby. into the Lady Aliana Ravenshade's room. Um, mm -hmm. It happens to have a nice covered bed that happens to have a very large full-body mirror against the wall next to it. There's a few candles lit around the room. Um, you can smell a strange uh, potpourri or incense of some kind that's moving through there. Um you have okay. to notice that there is a large leather bag next to the bed. She turns to you and All goes, right. so. Wait, am I in my nighty? You are in your nighty now. I'm assuming you have changed outfits uh, as you have made your nice. way there. And she goes, so, big boy. Cool. I'd like to start with massage. What do you say? I say it sounds good. Okay, what do you do? Um, I think I delicately pick her up and place her on the bed. As you go to pick her up, she turns to you and goes, huh, Not me, silly. I want you to Whoa. Lie down. Benny's just taking baths, but he climbs onto the bed and sort of just like waits. Like <laughs> She comes over and like pushes your shoulders down onto the bed. And uh, as you're Ooh. laying down there on face down, 
Um, you feel the edges of the nighty like start to lift. <laughs> oh dear goodness. How far? Yes, yes, yes. So uh, she she moves. I sent my link to coworkers for this one, people. <laughs> hey, you did not. Hey, it's not going and too far. Come on, come on. Already in here. Right, well, some of them are. So anyway, she lays hands upon you, <laughs> and um, she says, "So, where do you come from?" A place without a name. Where do you come from? Place without a name. Interesting. As she's like giving you a massage, you happen to look over and you can see on her wrist, she's pulled her uh, sleeves back slightly. There are um, some rather serious tattoos that kind of run up, spiraling uh, elven script that go almost all the way to her elbows on either hand. I've never been Damn. to a place without a name. Allow me to take you there. Oh, a nice little journey cross country. I'm assuming that we don't necessarily have time for that. Uh, if only jobs didn't exist. What a shame. Indeed. I can't hear you at the moment, Lowell. Really? Yeah. Your audio has just like... Faded out. Did it. It's okay now. No, it, you're like gone now. Gone, gone. Now, now, you're, now you're, back. you're back. What do you do? Oh, I um tell her. Oh, Benning says it is a shame we do not have more time. We must uh, utilize what we do have and do something nice for one another. Uh, suddenly, like there's a tweak sensation. Your whole body kind of goes stiff for for a moment as she like pokes an area of you that's very sensitive. And she goes, oh, if only it could be so. As she brings like one hand down, she, she you notice that you know, she she notices that you're looking at the uh, markings on her arm. She just says, you've never seen the art of the Telkasir? I say that I have, no. Mm, when I used to live in the city of Song, I used to be part of the war effort before they made me a politician. Um, I'd hope to join the Blade Singers. Now I'm just forever a mouthpiece. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. Wait. That's a lot. All at once. Wow. Uh, um, well, I must say, as far as mouthpieces go, um, I do believe I'm looking at one of the finer instruments of uh, precision. She like slaps you on your backside and giggles a little bit for a moment. And she's like, oh, you, oh, I don't like the politics here in Baldur's Gate, though. It's so complicated. She like swirls a finger right at the nape of your neck. There are factions within the city council that are plotting something day in, day out, every night. It's exhausting. I had to play both sides continuously to maintain my influence. I have so little power of my own and she like pinches you harder than you anticipate suddenly um she goes how about you you're so strong so big have you ever been helpless there are many times i have felt helpless in my life none of which have been uh shall we say of an intimate nature and i often find myself wondering what that experience may feel like hmm. however i i'm not accustomed to trying new things and must be persuaded is there anything you might do to persuade me oh i can be very persuasive as i need to <sighs> more money she reaches down to the side and there's like the sound of something being removed from the bag nearby. And she goes, here, put this on. And there's like a ball gag. I uh, am amenable to this proposition. However, I find our original price may need some uh, revisiting before mm. I am to acquiesce to this request. Well, I didn't bring a whole lot of extra coins coinage with me 
So terrible. I could trade in favors. And she like runs a finger down your arm. Woof. <laughs> you see, well, I, I think we were saying earlier, in for a penny, in for a pound. Information is the most valuable currency in these times, honestly. I could put in a good word here and there for your performance this evening. Would get you more individuals to come in and take your services. I assume you intend on being here for a while. Not as long as you might think. Tell me, what does the word Avernus mean to you? Avernus? It's one of the hells. Why? No reason, I suppose. Um, back to what we were originally discussing. Um, let, let's move this on, you know, uh, post haste. Benny just puts the ball gag in. Let's let's get things moving. He just puts the hey, ball gag got... in. It's a long Benning's, night. give me a constitution saving throw as she goes all in. Constitution? Oh, boy. That's on my main page, right? That's on the main yeah. page. Yeah. Yes. Oh, boy. Oops. Oops. Does this mean Benny gags just a bit? He's like, ha! <laughs> Don't forget, you do have bardic inspiration. You do. You can roll a d6. Oh. Is that a d6 for your inspiration at the moment? Go ahead and give me a d6 roll. We can increase that nine to something higher. You also happen to have uh, some party inspiration. That's a one. So you end up with a 10. No, he's not going to die. I vote we don't give him our <laughs> party inspiration. Shut it, you bitch. <laughs> Listen, you're not in imminent danger. Get your ass kicked and like it, okay? You Bennings, put yourself here. You perform your choice poorly, leaving a bad taste in her mouth uh, that she isn't happy with. And that potentially causes some problems with stress and stress in the hold future. Hold on, hold on. Or. What have you been eating? Or. You perform adequately, but it leaves you exhausted and injured, basically, for the next day. Okay, what? What do we? What do we raise the stakes, Tyson? What if uh, when I do my performance check, mm -hmm. if I get a fifteen or higher? You've already rolled. There is. That's constitution. That's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> that was to see if you could endure what she was doing. Performances for a Let different type of client. Pitch, so. Tyson. Come on. What was your pitch? I was going to say, if I get a 15 or higher, my performance is adequate and there are no side effects. <laughs> it's too late for that kind of answer. You've well, already failed. Unless well, your party would like to well, give you an inspiration role to use. You have one. Do, does does my performance impact the amount of money I get from this? Uh, if you choose the option where <laughs> you have a bad performance and stress's caress will be uh, impacted by it, then yes, you'll have a, a negative impact towards the amount of money that you have earned tonight. If you choose the other option where you were exhausted and not feeling so great after the events, uh, you will keep your money. I have ways to help with number two. Far be it for me to um, put a uh, damper on the great Shress's Caress's name. I will perform my best. Okay. Bennings, you leave with a bit of a limp and some internal uh, injuries. It happened. You know, it's... All right. That's as far as I've ever gone in a streamed game before. Well, there you go. <laughs> Uh, what does exhaustion mean? A level of exhaustion means all of your skills are rolled at disadvantage, including saving throws. Uh, I believe that's the details for one level. Yeah. Exhaust. We don't have one uh, easy to view on uh, fantasy grounds. So. Well, at least you have one and done. Maybe now just, you know, go enjoy your well-earned room and have a long rest. <laughs> Sometimes a hard day's work really does kind of feel good at the end. Sometimes you need to feel sore to remind yourself of what you've done. Just okay? ability checks. Okay. Oh, you're you're not going to forget this. <laughs> so you leave, and as you go to leave, uh, the lady like takes your hand and just says, "Thank you for the wonderful evening. You'll bear that mark of me for a while. Just remember oh. me every time that 
you feel the pain of it. And uh... I shall think of you every time I sit down. <laughs> All right. She like kisses you and then closes her door in your face. Nice. Uh, Bennings, right, you have gotten away with 136 gold pieces. Oh, I only get to keep 37, though, right? Because my room costs 100? <laughs> yeah. 200? What kind of bullshit is that? Wait, no, it's only 100. It was 100. It was 100. Okay. Also, you you got, I thought you he got like 100 and, like, that's why he got the initial, and then he was supposed to get a tip, right? Um, At the end? He yes, performed. we'll have, we'll have him roll was... for his tip. I'm going to roll for his tip. Well, I'll let oh. you roll for your tip. Uh, so roll 4d10s. Four four 4d10s, and you'll add 5 to that. Four, oh, 4d10s. And this will just prove uh, how happy she was with you at that moment. 25 Yay. extra gold? Not bad. Uh, yeah. I'll take it. So you now have 80 gold pieces. Good she you. said, you're going you're gonna to need this for later. <laughs> I am good. We choose some Can... salve or aloe vera balm. All right. Exactly. So we return. We see Ness uh, getting back after doing her cleaning routines. It's taken a while. We see Valen uh, cleaning up tables and busting them at the end of the night as many of the members are starting to, to fade away in that moment. Valen, you've come away from it uh, with the room, and you have been granted uh, 30 golden tips. So go ahead and put that into your gold. Ness, you already stole uh, a bunch of stuff worth money. So you get to share some of the tips, but cleaning staff only gets 10%. So you get uh, 10 gold uh, from the tips, but you still have a room. That's fine. I, I thought you were saying 10 gold, which would leave 90 gold needing to be for the, and then I was going to be like, you missing four. Okay. Oh. So room is paid for. Mm -hmm. I'll take the 10. As a matter of fact, I will just distribute that among the, the actual employees that work there. Okay. And they I'll are... just keep my money and my free room. They're happy and satisfied with you. Um, and as you go to, to head upstairs, uh, Mamzelle Amira like, takes you by the elbow and moves you aside. I know what you did outside, and I appreciate the efforts that you took to both stay yeah. quiet. I think that you will you will keep that word, I'm assuming. We don't want to have negative press associated with Shress's caress. Can I count that you will keep yourself... Mm, just act as if you'd never been here. Where? What are oh, you talking about? Good girl, I knew I liked you. You are welcome back. You and your friends, I suppose. Many of them performed adequately tonight. And it doesn't seem like that whole Trina business has caused too much trouble for us. Do I know who Trina... Or the? Do I know... I don't know who... I, I did not see where be, who Bennings went off with, did no. I? No, you did not. Okay. Uh, yeah, what's the, do you, what about this Trina person, anyway? She belongs to a group of pirates. Um, they... They ride the uncivil serpent. Uh, it's wanted in many different provinces at the moment. And I anticipated that uh, with a recent procurement of many of the uncivil servant's goods, that more of their allies and uh, angry pirates might make their way over here. And I did not appreciate uh, Thelmaris bringing a potential danger to the other men and women that work at my establishment. I protect them to the best of my ability and will not put them in harm's way if I can help it. Yeah, Thalmaris uh, sometimes doesn't use their brain as much as they think that they do. So I apologize on their behalf. Um, do, uh, Titan, do I know the uncivil servants? Uh, give me a an insight. Through my papa? Mm -hmm. It's a 29. And that's 20. 20. Nice. The uncivil servant uh, was one of the flotilla that your father used to oversee before he disbanded and their, their crews kind of scattered to the four winds. Ah. The captain okay. was somebody that your father knew and probably drank with on occasion. And after Trina had said that her old captain had died, you didn't know who that was. So your dad might be sad about that. What's the 
captain's name? Gosh, what was his name? Of course you're gonna ask that. I'm fine. I'll just I'll just Oh no, Uncle Pegleg, that's so sad. <laughs> uh, Papa's gonna be so upset. Papa's going to be so upset. Papa. Uh, Morusco Sesprin. That's his name. Mm, he's Uncle Pegleg. <laughs> okay. So, um she like pats your hand for a moment. It says, I, was, I just didn't, haven't watched that. I yeah. don't care. Okay. I would uh, recommend you bring this to your large friend. And she hands you a healing potion. Uh, I saw who he had gone off with this evening, and I anticipate he may require aid. Uh, who, who did he, who did he go off with? Oh, a very important patron here. I, can't say names. Okie dokie. Um, okay. I'm concerned. All right. So, yes. Then I'm going to gonna go to my room. Maybe find Benning's room and give him this. All right. So you uh, start heading. Not that I care about any of these schmucks or anything. Just, just, just don't want to carry this around. <laughs> so we will move uh, from here to our break since we are at basically the halfway point. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. We will be back in about 10 minutes. Uh, grab a drink, grab a snack, do whatever it is that you do when you're not around us, and we'll see you in a moment. Thank you. The game that we're currently playing uh, in front of you and being uh, inappropriate. Um, so we are moving from the, sh the caress over to Wistelar. Whistler, you have moved across town headed towards the bay. The Little Lantern itself is a tavern. Um, it's, a, it's a notorious docked ship turned tavern that is moored in the harbor. Um, as you approach it, the smell of salt water mixes with the scent of stale ale and smoke wafting from within <sighs> the uh, ship turned tavern. It sways gently in the tide just a little bit because it's still like moored there. Um, creaking and groaning as if complaining about its shorebound shackles. Uh, there's a narrow gangplank that leads you aboard, and the wooden deck underneath your feet is weathered and slick. There are lanterns hanging from the rigging around, casting a dim flickering light that barely penetrates the murky interior. There's a bit of smoke moving from within as well. The sounds of raucous laughter, clinking glasses, and muttered conversations fill the air. As you descend a narrow staircase, you enter into the main tavern area. The room is dimly lit by a few strategically placed lanterns, and uh, you can feel palpably the back alley deals being made all throughout the Little Lantern. As opposed to mm -hmm. the Elf Song, the Little Lantern caters to a different folk than just your, you know, individuals looking for a good time. This is the, the really the lowest part of the city. Um, it's got kind of a, a tight walls, low ceiling, makes it feel cramped and claustrophobic. Everybody, everywhere's kind of separated out. And uh, the general noise and the general layout makes it difficult to hear things beyond the tables that you're sitting at. Um, as you look around the room, your eyes adjusting to the light, Opal perched on your shoulder nearby, just kind of looking back and forth as well. You see uh, Opal like turns and looks at you and just <laughs> flits ahead a little bit to, to look around for like turning and just pointing and then like catching your gaze and pointing over towards a corner. You see Lareth sitting there, his wiry frame, partially hidden by shadows. He's alone, nursing a tankard of ale, obviously a day drunk, but possibly using that as a cover, like he's not actually drunk, but pretending to be for others around him. Um, he has like a sly grin that kind of appears and disappears in the shifting light down below. And as you make your way through, um, you recall how you first met Lareth. It was during a particularly difficult time when you were seeking a pink cloud emerald. Um, rare gemstone, high profile commission that you had. Uh, he had approached you himself, actually, with a proposition because he had heard you were looking for the gem you'd asked about around a little bit and uh, just had wanted a discreet favor. He just wanted you to place a series of black roses on a gravestone for him, said it was an old family habit, and left it at that. He'd done a few different jobs for you and, and found some things for you on occasion after that, which uh, had made him an invaluable source of information for you, although, you know, he's not necessarily entirely trustworthy, but he is reliable. Mm -hmm. 
As you approach his table, you feel the familiar tension of dealing with him kind of building up within your body. And he looks up, his grin widening as the uh, recognition dawns. Well, if it isn't my favorite jewel crafter, what brings you to my humble corner of the world? Oh, uh, there has to be a reason I just can't come for your charm and your presence. Well, Earth kind of leans back, feigning disinterest as his eyes flicker with curiosity looking at you. Oh, yes. Just catching up with an old friend. I appreciate oh, yes. that. Nothing strange or weird about just you know, buying an old friend a drink, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. Take a seat. You and your demon. Uh, devil. Uh, whatever you are. Opal's like, uh. devil. There's a distinction, okay. damn it! <laughs> he gets testy. It's fine. It's okay. We've had a, a, a we've had a day. Um, okay. So I, if it's uh, if it's okay to you, uh, um, would you mind if we, you know, jump past our usual pleasantries and just come uh, to uh, some urgent business that? Uh, well, I'm just dying to see if you uh, might have a little bit of information for me. You you hurt me. <laughs> jumping directly past decorum and straight into work. Um, my accent yeah, has just gone I, all over the place. Anyway, mm. so... I just want to express the urgency of the matter more than uh, trying to tarnish our relationship or anything else like that. Uh, it's a matter of uh, importance, and I find myself in a position where um, each moment is valuable. So you're looking for information from me? You happen to have um, mm -hmm. something very pressing? So he looks up at you, and you can see a glint in his eyes. Mm -hmm. If it's super important and super fast, he knows it's worth a lot more than usual. <laughs> and he mm -hmm. goes, well, let's get down to brass tacks then. Uh, what is yes. it that you're looking for? What do you want to know? Uh, who do we need to kill? <laughs> so... um Killing may or may not be involved, but I'm hoping to do that myself if it comes down to it. But, uh, you know, we go back quite a ways, and, uh, you know, you've proven yourself to be uh, very resourceful and reliable. And at the very least, our business dealings have always been mutually beneficial. Flatterer. And, uh, well, it's not going to reduce well, my price. I know. This is just, uh, you know, making up for some uh, lost time. But, uh, so my storefront, as you well know, uh, the main source of our business, uh, has been very recently broken into. I heard um, about normally, that. I wouldn't Un come to you. you unpleasant know. business. But, that. Very. Uh, I normally wouldn't come to you for such things, but uh, the perpetrators took nothing but a, a commission I was working on. It was a ruby, large ruby with yes. a. Uh, well, with some, let's just say, interesting magical capabilities and essences imbued into it, and uh, mm. it's very val valuable. And uh, he the leans back, of it has leans back for a moment, and like raises pressing. a hand. You know how this works? He puts his hand on the mm -hmm. table and just pats it a few times. Now, this will require favor down the road. Mm -hmm. I'll keep it in my pocket for when I need to ask it of you. And uh, go. Of course. Of course. Do you have a down payment now? How much you need? Say 50 gold to start. Will you take collateral or does that have to be liquid? Collateral's fine. Okay. Um, I'm going to take off uh, two of my rings mm -hmm. and slide them across the table. He looks at them, picks them up. This will work for now. He pockets mm -hmm. them real quick. Rubies, rubies, rubies. They seem to be in high demand recently. There, there's a merchant, goes by Corbin Vosk, who's been buying up any ruby the right size for the last couple of weeks. A few other merchants have been looking for similar stock. It's pretty lucrative. I have one here. He pulls out like a small ruby that's cut to fit in a ring socket, probably taken off of a ring somewhere else. But he didn't want it. Said it wasn't the right vibe, energy. Um, Opal looks over at it and smells it. Doesn't smell like home. It says, you might find Corbin up near the Black Gate District. He happens to uh, operate out of a small shop next to the bathhouse. 
Okay, well. Be careful, friend. He is not the type you wish to anger. And his grin kind of fades a little bit as his eyes take on a more serious look and he leans forward. Don't forget you owe me. And... Of course. I have looked into Corbin. It isn't his real name. Did some digging. He came up cleaner than a duke's arse. He's a nobody. Not at all. Which means he's a somebody. My money is on one of the great houses. He's a pretender. Ah. <sighs> Okay. Wouldn't be the first time, probably won't be the last. You gotta love old Baldur's Gate, is that right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, he messed with the wrong bitch, so uh, we are going to have some words. I'll keep your name out of my mouth, and uh, if and when you need to collect, you know where to find me. Yes, yes, um... This one's for free. Some of the fist are on Corbin's payroll. Mm. Be careful, friend. I don't want to see you in the harbor. Uh, I know. Where else would you get your coin? Right? You're the best money bags a man can buy. Uh, have as a friend. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Whatever. Yes, yes, yes. Whatever you want to call this uh, dynamic we share. We know what our relationship is. It's a good one. I don't want to have a good deal be broken. Neither do I, and that's why I come to you. Be well, we still are. And opal, mm. friend, devil. And he like... I'm going to slide one more gold coin across the table and just treat yourself to a round on uh, hopefully my good fortune. He like pockets it, picks it up, well, picks it up and flips it once in his hand and immediately waves to a tavern wench and, like, flicks her the coin and she starts bringing over a, another tankard of ale. Mm -hmm. I'll give him, like, a wink and then make my way. Okay. You head out and you start heading across the city. Do you immediately head towards High Court? Um... I'm in a weird spot because I would have no clue where the rest of the party is, correct? You like, wouldn't. I know some connections, but that's it. So You would know that they, I would have... they would, at this point, have just gotten mm -hmm. to the Elf Song. Yeah, which is, but when we departed, I'd have no clue. And I only know some partial, like, associations with them. Mm -hmm. So the best thing, I feel like the best thing I would do would be to head over to that way because... I would want to have backup, but mm -hmm. at this point, it's kind of hard. So, so you're going to go um, to the Elf Song I, and try to meet them there? If I knew that that's where they're going, yes. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, I would probably, the only connection I know about would be the Charessa's Caress to ask for the other companion to see if maybe they know where they are. But so, I would so probably Elf put Song's, my effort into trying to know where they're at. Elf Song's closer for now. Um, so we're going to assume you head over in that direction first before you go to okay. Um So you walk across the, the city somewhat. You move through the, the bustling throngs of individuals going about their day-to-day -day business, travelers and you know uh, tourists, as it were, and merchants and cutthroats. Um, and as you approach uh, the tavern, you see that there's a cordon of flaming fists standing outside, currently arresting uh, a bunch of rough looking individuals many with tattoos many of them bearing uh outfits that would be very useful on the ocean um so they have made it so nobody can get into or out of the establishment oh boy always all right you see captain zaj um... standing there and ordering people around and uh he's like and find the others i'm sure they're inside They'll need to hear the update about what we found. Uh, oh, uh, Captain, if, if you wouldn't mind, could I just spare a, a oh, moment of your time, please? Um, uh, Willamy? Uh, that, that was someone I was associated with, but it does start with a W, so uh, close enough, I guess. Uh, it, it was still our, uh, so are your friends... We met earlier. Did you... Are you... Obviously, you're not inside. Did, did you make your way out, or...? 
no, I, I had to step away for a moment. So I, I was trying to reconnect with my friends. I, I, are they still inside, or do you know where they where they went? We were just finishing up out here at the moment. We were about to enter in and assist them. We heard the sounds of violence within, but we had our hands oh. full. And he points over to the pirates. A uh, large okay. pirate faction. We've been trying to arrest them for some time. They still have a group in the harbor, but ah, um, we okay. got a good portion of them, so go us. Um, sure. Good you job. see someone like being dragged out by the fist uh, from the entrance. Get off of me! Get off of me! I'm just a bard! I didn't belong here! This isn't part of... I am not one of them! She, like, points over, having a tattoo that looks exactly like the guy next to her. And the fist agent, like, looks at it and looks at the other one. And she's like, that's a coincidence! And you see her just, like, being shuffled away by the by the guard with a bunch of uh, other band members with instruments trailing behind. So I, I see you have your hands full, then. Um, well, at least a good haul, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, we are going to have to go through here and see if there's any of the remainders left. Uh, the sound of fighting stopped. So... Okay, okay. I don't want to get in the way, but uh, I am trying to find the rest of my group, if you wouldn't mind. Well, why don't we go in then? Um, you're deputized, so you can come with me. Everybody else, stand aside. And Captain oh. Zaj, like, leads you inside the... Uh, hmm the inn and as you go inside you can see a proprietor there the people behind the bar they're starting to open things back up cleaning up some of the mess there's blood all over the floor there's a dead pirate like downstairs there's a bunch of uh like left behind bloody footprints that go up and down the stairwell um you like see him turn and go they did quite a number on things here and you see him like moving up the staircase to go see what's upstairs and he turns back to you for just a second puts a hand out in front of him and goes now look, we don't know what we're gonna find up there. It turns out your friends didn't make it. I want you to be mentally prepared for that. I can handle myself, but thank you for your concern. It would be the first uh, death I've had to face. All right, everybody, let's go. Let's see what we gotta deal with upstairs. And he takes a few steps up and around the corner, and as he reaches the top of the stairs, he goes, "Dear gods!" And uh, you step up behind him, and you just see. A bunch of dead people, all carved up. Takes you a brief moment to get that like vision out of your eyes for a second before you realize none of your party's there. As a matter of fact, they don't seem to be here at all. What? <laughs> uh, well, whatever happened? Um, a quick peruse at the um, uh, well, the various bodies here. Uh, uh, no one I know is here, thankfully. Um, so I don't know if they were a part of the scuffle, cause of the scuffle, took care of the scuffle, um, but uh, needless to say, uh, my I guess my destination isn't here right now. Okay. Well, if you happen to see them again, tell them I need to speak with them about our next steps. Uh, I still haven't got the information out mm -hmm. of Tarina that they were supposed to gather. So, um, so yeah, if you see them again, my office is just over by the Basilisk Gate. Just let me know. Basilisk okay? Gate, got it. Yep. Thank you. You'll be the very first person I tell them about. Yes, of course. In the meantime, um, we've got some cleanup to do, and we have to talk to the proprietor. So you're free to go as you wish. Oh, uh, thank you uh, very much. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I guess uh, toodles, and uh, I'm gonna go downstairs, and I'm gonna go straight. I'm gonna go to the proprietor first. Mm -hmm. like, so step down to Alan to do. at the bar, and he looks over at you, wringing his hands and looking a little nervously around here. Apparently having all the fists nearby is making him uncomfortable. And as you walk up to the front, he just goes, Ooh, uh, we're currently closed for business, but if you come back in about an hour or two... Uh, I, I don't mean to be, uh, be rude. I'm actually uh, deputized um, f um, from one of the fists upstairs. So you're one of them. Uh -huh. Okay, got it. <laughs> what uh, can I do for you, of. officer? Uh, uh, only because it's convenient, not because I'm actually a part of them. Uh, but... Uh, uh, do you, uh, I'm going to describe the party and just go, uh, did, did you see any of people like this either a part of all of this or leaving the facility or, uh, uh, I'm trying to track them down. Did you see where they went or anything else like that? I can't say as I saw them leave. Last thing I saw was them heading upstairs and there was violence and lots of really loud and obnoxious music. Oh, okay. That does sound like them. Um, does the, uh, does the upstairs go out to the back or anything else like that? Um, uh, only if you to, don't you know, mind do a two-story drop to the city streets. I did hear shattering glass. 
I'll, I'll start there, but uh, thank you for your time, and uh, hope this goes smoothly for you. Thanks. Um. And uh, I'll walk out to the back alley and just see if I can find any clues or anything else like that, any so trace. You walk around outside a little bit, and uh, as you step into the western alley, you can see glass shattered upon the ground. You look up, one of the windows has been just kind of blasted out. Um they probably jumped down here, but you don't know where they would have went. Give me an investigation roll. Absolutely. Investigation. 15. With a 15, you can see that there's a little, uh, like a blood-stained boot print that leads over towards a, a, a collapsed cart off to the side. Um, as you move over there, either somebody was looking at it, or maybe there's, maybe there's something under it. Sure. Give me a I'll take a look. Give me an athletics check to lift this thing. Okay, I'm gonna guidance myself on this, so I'll add a D four. Go for it. Well, nope, doesn't matter. That's a crit fail. <laughs> so one. So you pull yep. and you pull and there's a <laughs> and your back kind of pops for oh! a second. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. If only there was a big strong man around. Oh. <laughs> um, if only let me <laughs> get a roll perception for some of this the fist members nearby. You see uh, the sergeant from earlier come walking over in your direction. Oh, oh Whistler! Uh, oh, it's I good was to... I in the line of oh, duty. Dear Lord, are you all right? He, like, rushes over to your side uh, and looks at you. I'll be fine if I just have a government-sanctioned pension and some workman's comp. Uh, it would be great. Oh, uh, you and I both, uh, friend. A couple hearts, maybe? Yeah, that would uh, be great. Uh, uh, I was... Taking a part of the investigation, you know, doing my due diligence, and I noticed something under this extremely heavy cart, and I just, I tried to lift it myself, but oh, he like you can leans see, down. It really did a number. He leans down and grabs the edge of the cart and pulls a little bit and goes, "Oh, this needs some grease, like something that'll help it lift appropriately." He puts out his hand. I'll, I'll like, I'll like caress it and like give it a kiss and be like. There you go. That's all you need. What the? Yep. Uh, what in the it. hell's was that? It's um, uh, uh, just my, my my love and admiration for your uh, strength in this moment, kind sir. Look at those rippling bicep of yours. I mean, that armor really isn't con doesn't really you know conceal them, do they? I mean, how could anything? Give me a persuasion roll to try to convince this individual mm. through flattery to do this for you. Got it. 17. 19. 19. With the plus two, yeah. He goes, mm. you know, normally I don't do this for everyone. I mean, everyone has a first time, dear. But I, I've probably got the musculature for this. All right. And he, like, spits on his hands, grabs a hold of the edge of the cart, and proceeds to try to lift, so I have to roll for him. Uh, He barely is holding it upright. <laughs> There you go. Just keep it straight. There you go. Tense it up. Lift the legs. Lift the legs. Lift those glutes. As he lifts it up, it's not going to be far enough for you to get underneath of it necessarily, but there is a, uh, a city sewage hatch there that is locked. Uh, of course they did. Uh, oh, okay, uh, Sergeant, you can put it down. Don't want to hurt yourself. <laughs> Thunk right back onto the ground. And he goes, oh, and he like stretches his muscles a little bit. Oh, man. Oh, you poor thing. Thing. I'm gonna go over and just kind of give like a, a kind of a small massage and just be like, uh, I must have, it must have just been nothing. I didn't really see anything uh, underneath there. The boot print must have just not went anywhere. I'm sorry for that. Oh, that's a real shame. Oh, you well, see, like, you, you know, know out in the, the window, the glass, the boots. In the meantime, we did have a minor update to your uh, situation. Oh, you did? Yeah, somebody saw some strange individuals uh, wearing a similar attire. One of them had that bulldoggy face thing going on. I heard somebody else in the uh -huh. city talk about that. Um, they headed up towards the uh, northeastern edge of town near High Court. Oh, well, thank you for that. Um... I'll see what I can do with that information. Um, that, that's at least a start, right? Uh, I, I, I should be thankful for that. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. But uh, you've been a dear, thankfully. Uh, so thank you for the help. And uh, you keep 
doing what you're doing. And uh, oh, thanks, thanks. <laughs> you know, I appreciate individuals who recognize my worth. By the way, I'm Ben Braggs. You can call me Wistel. Everyone does. Um, and it was a pleasure watching you work. Uh, but uh, I have some business elsewhere, so you take care now, dear. You, you as well. You as okay. well. You're like some of the other guys. Hey, Braggs! Sergeant Braggs, get over here! And they, like, turn around. It's and... okay, boys. He's just trying to get a date. It's fine. But you be on your way. <laughs> All right. And uh, from there, I'm assuming at this point, you start making your way over to the caress. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. It is now uh, late evening, and by the time that you get there, uh, the midnight hour is fast approaching. So we move back to Stress's caress. Um, we see Ness heading upstairs and going over towards Benning's room. Valen, you're not too far behind. Your work is done for the night. And uh, you now have your room that you can travel into as well. So, Bennings, you have a limp. Um, everything kind of hurts. It's a very weird sensation. It's like, you, you know, there's been a couple of incidents on the farm, I'm sure. I was going <laughs> to say, it's also being described by someone I'm sure has no idea how to describe this, but keep going. <laughs> you don't know my life. Anyway... Um, <laughs> Like whatever I comment there is <laughs> just a trap. It is either it's no winning trap. or no losing or both. Or both. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> you happen to go up to, or you're up there uh, about the same time that Valen arrives at his room and goes to to rest for the night. Valen, you're experiencing mm -hmm. some melancholy. You've had to deal with uh, some difficult difficult emotions for a while. And now you've done some hard day's work. You've fought during the afternoon. You're exhausted. And uh, having to settle down for the night, your mind becomes filled with a little bit of turmoil. Um, the fact that you're, the love of your life is missing, that your city's been destroyed, but now is restored and now is trapped, uh, according to the elf song. Um, and you have no idea what to do with it. There's a sense of impotence there. It has got to be driving you crazy. It's like you see somebody that's in pain and there's literally nothing you can do for them. So, like, Valen looks over at you, Ness. He's obviously got a little bit of a haunted look in his eyes before he steps into his room. Do you say anything to her before you go or do you just kind of shut yourself in and go to bed? I think I just would look at her and just tell her, have, you know, have a good night. I, I just need to be in my thoughts for a little bit. In that other makes, words. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. I absolutely thought, by the way, that, you know, like the whole elf thing, and maybe this is like, yeah, I don't know, ancestorist or something, but like, I, I didn't think you'd be able to serve people because just kind of the whole thing you've got going and you did a pretty good job. So well done. Well, thank you. The, uh, the sausage that you prepared for us tonight was quite interesting but thank you it worked well we got some tips uh but with that i'm, I'm gonna go uh rest and and uh think do i have anything that might be like canonically sleep inducing you know like a sort of a high like not i'm not talking like a sleep potion or something but you know like a little equivalent chamomile of melatonin chamomile exactly. yeah. melatonin the, the yeah i'm yeah. sure i'm sure you Alcohol. have something to assist THC with resting. Oh, there we go. i'm gonna tell him to take <laughs> here this that'll help you sleep you worked hard <laughs> valen Thanks. um i have to say that you would know this, and I don't know why I didn't point this out. Elves don't sleep. <laughs> they meditate. Oh, yeah. um, so oh, honey, this will help you sleep. <laughs> They're immune to sleep. Anyway. Oh, sorry. You tell me, this I will, did all that you work could say this and will, that bitch isn't even going to sleep? What? That doesn't say that yep. it'll help you relax. That yeah, it'll help, help you relax. Well, they still have, it's like four hours of weird meditation or whatever, right? Yeah. Aww for four hours. It'll help him do that. Mm -hmm. Does Ness necessarily know that, by the way? I mean, Everyone it's a very... That. It's a common, common. It's a common, it's a common knowledge thing. for okay. elves, yeah. 
Oh, well, thank I'm you. I'm from Baldur's Gate. I know all this oh. shit. Mm-hmm. This gave an elf sleeping potion. What the hell? <laughs> Uh, um, anyway, so she gives it's you It's actually a to... horse tranquilizer. It'll make you feel a little more relaxed. That's what it is. <laughs> so you move Here, into take your this room. ketamine. She gives you a mysterious That's powder okay. you're supposed to add to something. And... <laughs> tea. tea. Chamomile tea, as was whistled along the breeze. There you go. I'll just put it. Alright, so you sit down, you have some tea, you start moving into your meditation. Uh, Ness, you move along and you end up over at Benning's room. Um, you can hear the sounds of groaning coming from within. Uh, I'm going to wait for just a second to see if I hear one voice or two. Just one. <laughs> okay. Just didn't want to interrupt anything. What? Uh, it, it's uh, Ness. Uh, can I come in? Oh. Thalmaris's friend. Yes, please do. Please, please. I uh, I need someone to uh, take my mind off things. I'm not here for a visit like that. I mean, I shut the door. And... So you step in and you um, look over you at Benning's. You truly are too much. Give me an insight check, please, Ness. Jesus, Ness, what do you get up to? <laughs> <laughs> eh, doing my duty on a shitty day, you know? So 26? You recognize uh, braided cord marks around his neck. You see bruises that go down under his collar. Uh, you see some abrasions at the edges of his mouth. Um, you can tell that he's holding himself uh, in ways that indicate uh, some bruising that's going to appear over the course of the next day. Um, and he's got a look of disturbed wonder in his eyes as well as exhaustion. Well, um, I can see from the pattern there that somebody used a, a, a butterfly band knot, uh, and then that one I think is a bowstring tie. Um, I am um, the a random. So the proprietress of this establishment uh, told me to get this to you. I believe it, it is a healing potion, which you might need. I uh. uh appreciate that can i go to bed now i i, I it, it has been a day and uh I, why are you asking permission to go to bed I, it seems like uh everyone you really are a sub aren't you? left me <laughs> oh i just don't want to be left here without anyone i uh know that's all oh oh um you you're fine. Do you, do you want me to stay in here, or you just want me to not leave without you in the morning? Just, just please ensure I do not get left behind. I um, have had that happen to me one too many times in my life, and uh, I don't believe I uh, can uh, allow that to happen with this party. You were from Boston there for a second. <laughs> party. Party. Uh, Boston. So what I'm um, I'm sorry to hear about that. That that sounds very sad and lonely. We we can talk about that another time. You can have the potion and then we can both compare abandonment stories because I, I have a couple of things I can say in that territory as well. Um well done. Good job. Not Thomaris's friend, uh, for the record. Uh coworker is fine. Uh and uh are you going to be okay? Like this level of depression? Uh, sometimes after, you know, you get tied up and there's some adrenaline and stuff. When that adrenaline comes down, you know, like depression can set in. And I just, I don't want to leave you if you're feeling vulnerable. Don't know the meaning of the word. Mm, you know, I can detect lies very well. Uh, but... <laughs> Roll a die, bitch. <laughs> Fine, I'm rolling a die. Give me an insight roll, I suppose. <laughs> Listen, I got an eight, but uh, roll an eight, 17. See what I'm saying? Uh, Bennings. I can't do anything to this bitch. I can't feel anything to any of you motherfuckers. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm doing all the goddamn time. Well, you still Holy have to make shit. a, you have to make a, con uh, a roll against her, a contested roll. Yeah. Yeah, so make a deception check. You're making yes, a deception yes. check to see if you can hide your oh, feelings. So you just got to be a 17. Just, 
you're the defender here, so I'm going to say if you get a 17 or higher, you win. No. That is a 13. So, no. Um, Also, I was just going to canonically walk away without rolling. You were the one who wanted to roll it up. All right. So, Bennings, are you lying? Are you not okay? No, Bennings is okay. He's just... He... He's worried about getting left behind by the only people he knows in this city. And just as he feels like he has a grapple, uh, he can, like, know the people around him, we've immediately gone into an environment where all of a sudden he's without everybody he's been with this whole time. So now he's just kind of feeling a little discombobulated. And as he has his own room, which he's never had in his life before, because he comes from a household of many He's feeling a little um, just kind of like oh, by himself, which isn't something he's ever had to settle into before. Sounds like he needed the sleeping potion. <laughs> <laughs> mm. He's tired. Bennings is going to go to bed. I uh, appreciate the uh, madam of the stress's caress bringing me this. Thank you. Uh, I did pay for my room tonight, correct? I'm judging by the marks on your body, yeah, I think you probably did. Do, do, um, and and I can go. Do do you wanna? I I can. I have a three dragon ante set. We could play if you want before you go to sleep, or you want to go to sleep. I'm even yeah, with my insight you, check. Uh, Lowell is giving me contrary. <laughs> I don't know what I should do. You, you are a busy woman. Just just ensure that I do not get left behind in the morning when everybody packs their things and runs, as seems to be custom with this group of misfits. He's afraid that they're going to end up having to leave the building very quickly while he's unconscious and leave him behind. I mean, yeah, he's we've left huh. everywhere we've gotten to extremely fast. I don't <laughs> think we've settled into one area. But you were ever. with... We went to the park to have a chat. We had to leave. We went to... The hell diverse place we had to leave. Everywhere we go, we're running from. So I just don't want to get left. Yeah. Okay. Go, go, night, night, uh, big boy, and uh, mm. make sure that we don't leave your ass behind. I uh, will see you in the morning. So the door behind is like... big boy. That is a very specific, weird request. <laughs> trauma he's asleep pretty much immediately <laughs> after you leave or as you're leaving too as soon as his head hits the pillow it's been a long day uh, Ness, <sighs> so you step out in the hallway and um, uh, are you thinking of going to bed too or do you want to see the like cleanup that happens at Charessa's caress the aftermath when people like meet up and then go home that kind of thing what do you want to do uh, I don't want to see the like, aftermath I'm talking about okay. just the, the crew Meeting up, saying goodnight, oh, having a, a like nightcap drink, shit. whatever. Yeah, the after shift shit. Um, am I tired? Uh, that's probably. You. You've, you've, I mean, you I did, mean, I haven't been with y'all very long. You did have a. Has long, it been a day? It's been a long day. One one long day, um, but it's not like you've not worked as an operative multiple long days in a row. Uh, so. I leave it up to your discretion. You're probably a little bit tired, but you could you could likely push through. It. I think I'll I'll long rest for my skills. Okay, so you go back towards your room, and uh, as you close the door behind you, we move downstairs. Uh, Thol, you are in the after party <laughs> at at the cleanup and everybody getting ready to go home after work, um, and you don't see this yet. But uh, at the front doors, uh, they open up, and the mamzelle is, is standing there. And this individual comes in very late hours. You know, sometimes people come in in special requests. She doesn't necessarily say no to them, um, but she usually only works the evening shifts. So a uh, handsome, well-dressed man approaches the counter of Shrestha's caress, and he walks up to the mamzelle. Good evening, mamzelle. I was wondering if you had a worker by the name of Thulmaris here. Mzell Mir's eyebrows raise, and her cat Kira hisses at the stranger, before just a simple look from the man causes the cat to stop and sprint off as if stung. The Mamzelle's eye eyes narrow slightly as she assesses her visitor. We do not usually give out information about our employees to strangers, she replies, her voice both measured and calm. Oh, forgive me. Where are my manners? 
Uh, my name is Valerian Stormcrow. He says this with a disarming smile, his voice smooth and dripping with charisma. I'm an old acquaintance of Thilmaris's. It's been years, and I would very much like to reconnect with him. I assure you, my intentions are purely social. His eyes glint with amusement and a hint of impatience. The Mamzelle maintains her composure, but feels an undercurrent of unease. Thilmaris is likely working with other customers. He raises an eyebrow as he looks around and sees everybody cleaning up for the night. However, if you wish to see him... Just wait until he's available. Please, uh, make yourself comfortable in the lounge. She gestures towards the seating area near the bar. <laughs> Valerian inclines his head slightly in acknowledgement, his smile never wavering. Thank you, Mademoiselle. I will wait. Uh, the Mademoiselle moves through the room rather quickly and uh, finds you off to the side where you're setting up for the evening, putting away your, your costume and things like that. And... Um, She's holding Kira under one arm, her cat. It's easy to see that the cat's unsaddled, and uh, the mamsel's got kind of a strange look on her face. Well, there's mm. someone to see you here. Uh, this late? I didn't think we'd be entertaining anyone else. Yeah, it's a strange case. It says he knows you. Um, it said his name is uh, Valerian. As she says that, there's a ringing that hits your ears, and your headache mm -hmm. comes back stronger than before. Do you know him? Are you okay, dear? You look a little pale. I, um... Why don't you head to bed, Mamsel? I'll, I'll uh, make certain that he's uh, taken care of. Hmm. I'll... I'll have him settled in a private lounge first. And I think I have a chat I need to have with... Gregor and Marcus, if you need anything, those are the bouncers, mm -hmm. you can just let us know. Drinks or whatever. Okay? She obviously recognizes your discomfort a little bit um, and just takes it as you being nervous about meeting this individual. Yeah. Uh, he is doing his best to try and hide how genuinely afraid he is at this moment mm -hmm. as like the headache just keeps getting bigger as the name bounces around in his head you see as uh, she walks away your vision kind of clouds and you can see a fireplace you remember the feeling of bear fur, a bear fur like rug <laughs> you remember someone's heated embrace a breath on your neck a searing pain mm -hmm. As you uh, see the Mamzelle move back with the guards nearby, um, she goes, he's in lounge number six. And then she just like nods and moves off with them. Close enough to be an earshot if you were to shout, but far enough away to give you some privacy. Mm -hmm. And I think it's probably like at that moment of like walking that mm -hmm. it's, a moment of like the headache exploding. So I'll ask right now mm -hmm. of the five people who are here slash if Whistle are somewhere nearby, who's still awake? It's going to be Ness, uh, Willami, and and Whistle are shortly. You're not quite close mm. enough yet, but you will be soon. Um, wouldn't Valen still be awake? Valen's meditation head? puts him in a state where he's basically unconscious. Yes. Oh, but I wouldn't. I feel like he would still be able to notice something pretty severe. Uh, depending on what um, you're it is. away. Depending on what it um, is, yes. But but basically, the headache explodes, and all of those who are still awake and close enough, you kind of hear. You hear a strange voice that's not in your room, but in your head. Uh, but Ness, you've heard this voice plenty of times. It's Inferno's voice. Uh, they always switch in timber. Um, so it's somebody nobody but... else has met. <laughs> except yes. Ness. Yes. Precisely that. Um, one second. Um, as kind of like they stop actually going towards the private lounge and 
just like the 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 thought process becomes how how did he find me how did he know i was here this wasn't supposed to happen i was supposed to find him i was supposed i have to leave it doesn't matter i have to leave and if i leave if i leave he'll hurt them Mamzelle and the others. Balin and the others, he'll hurt them. It doesn't matter, I have to leave and... It's strange. Because... You hear Thomas' voice. Now. No. We're gonna speak to him. I was made so that he couldn't hurt us anymore. He can kill us, but we're not that person. Not anymore. And Thomaris will just walk directly into that room, unarmed, unarmored, and alone. You enter the private lounge. Uh, so, go ahead. Just, just really quickly, uh, not quite alone. I'm just gonna sneak. I'm just this fuck is what Ness says and then sneaks outside and goes that direction to the lobby okay. whatever you start heading downstairs you feel that desperation and that kind of weirdness that vibe uh is is not a great one um for sure so he's not my friend okay just <laughs> okay. making sure everyone doesn't die i don't care of course what this what a, what i but this broke my meditation. Your meditation is designed to stop thoughts so you have time to rest, which is why this wouldn't necessarily have done so. I'll let you okay. roll a perception check, but it's going to have a disadvantage, so you need to roll twice and take the lowest roll because of something that's happening to you right now. Oh. Yeah, you're, 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 we're uh, all busy here. <laughs> what about Willamy? Willamy, you would hear that. I'm assuming you're finishing up set, mm -hmm. but you're also going to be <laughs> impacted at roughly the same time because when it rains, <laughs> it pours. <laughs> so no, Balin, you are you are too out and preoccupied with what's starting to happen to you, and Willamy, um, you hear it, but at the same time you hear it, a message hits your mind from Cat Catastrophe Jones. So I'll come back to that in a moment. You'll be preoccupied with discussing with her. So at the moment, it's just Ness downstairs. And Wistelar, as you're walking on the street and getting closer to the caress, an intense headache hits you. And behind it, you feel like someone shouting loudly over a long distance far away. You can't quite make out what they're saying, but it's something. Um, so... As you uh, enter the private lounge, um, it's a room designed for discrete conversations, got comfortable seating on either side, dim lighting, a window on one side that can, uh, it's opaque, it can be opened if they wish to or not, but um, Valerian stands there, gazing out the city with the curtains pulled back, uh, one arm leaning up against the edge of the window while the window is, itself is open, the moonlight kind of shining through, um, giving you a, a nice view of a very well-rounded backside. Um, he turns as you step inside, his eyes lighting up with recognition and something else. Thulmaris, my dear friend, it's been far too long. And to like the rest of anyone who, like, so probably just to Ness, um, you hear Inferno's voice just like screaming, uh, just like in rage and fear and pain. But it is Thulmaris' voice that speaks to Valen. Is that what we are now? I could have sworn we had a very different title the last time I laid eyes on you. Well, I'm sorry. The last time we laid eyes on you. The last time you laid eyes on me, it was just business. It wasn't personal. You have to understand that. I still find you beautiful. I'm very surprised that I was able to smell you here when i arrived in baldur's gate he steps a little closer to you his presence becomes this strange 
intoxicating and suffocating feeling all at once. You know me, I couldn't resist the chance to catch up with an old friend when I recognized you here. You look good. Whoever did all of this did a grand job, can't even see the scars anymore. You left so abruptly all those years ago. I've missed our time together. You have visions flood through your mind again, holding you besides the flames. Kisses in the darkness, danger and lust in equal measure. You remember throwing caution to the wind. You remember power and pain. It's so palpable, you immediately close it off as fear and coldness fills you again. You know this man. You knew then that he was dangerous. You know now he's more so. There's something that exists beneath and behind his eyes. Give me an, uh, give me a check here on that one. Give me an insight. Okay. Uh, I'll add a d6 to that. 17 plus Ooh, six, 23. Looking into his eyes, the windows to the soul, you recognize that he's not just one person anymore either. There is something caught in there with him. Something infernal. Oh, I see now. We were a very stupid child, enamored with, and like, Fulmaris, like, brushes against the, their jaw, enamored by the danger, the ambition. But you, you took it too far, not just with me, but with yourself. What does it feel like? being a demon's bitch boy, or devil's bitch boy. <laughs> Not one to mince words. Oh, you've got it backwards. I am no one's slave. I contain someone now. Look, I wanted to see if you're still the same Elian Lightward I knew. If you've truly changed or if you still have that spark I so adored you and your father both provided me so much I would only wish to continue my arrangement if it pleases us both you have to understand I know you have collateral now I know you have companions friends and we can work together and no harm will come to them ness give me an insight check why did you get so loud <laughs> <laughs> you have moved close to the parlor and you can actually overhear some of this the mamzelle is standing not too far away she looks over at you curiously but doesn't stop you you got a 20. 20 with a 20 you recognize the name the light ward family um they were a prominent uh, family with uh, a head of the Lathanderan church in Elturel. Um, Lathander seems off-brand. <laughs> Gideon Lightward was the, the leader of the Church of Lathander, and now it makes sense. From descriptions, that's probably Thul's dad. Le Gasp. They gasp. Um, and I think, like, that headache redoubles and explodes again because Thule is thinking about the pain of their last meeting and then thinks not of his face, but of Willemys and Valens, Wistelars, of Bennings, even Ness their faces in his position and that terrifies him angers him and pushes valerian up against the wall of the lounge and i would just say just psionic energy 
comes out of their hands into the form of a blade against Valen's, uh, Valerian's. sorry, Valerian's, Valerian's neck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have new tricks. Do you still have the old ones? You, you broke him a long, long time ago in a different life. You broke him. Those tricks are gone. This is what I have now. So you're telling and me... And you... You have lost your strength. You have lost <laughs> your value to me? Well, that's unfortunate. As he looks down at the blade in your hand that is manifested, he doesn't seem all that surprised by it. Um, but then he lifts his hand for just a moment. Give me a... Uh, Constitution saving throw. Oh my gosh, no! Okay, 17. 17 isn't bad. It doesn't beat his DC, though. Yeah, I know. So, uh, as you put that near his throat, he says, you have no longer, you're no longer of use to me if you don't have these powers. He lifts one hand, and suddenly you're off your feet. As you're trying to reach for him, you find yourself moving backwards against the wall, where suddenly you are just slammed up against it. He's just standing there, and he, like, picks at his teeth for a second. As a, a crushing weight seems to be grabbing around your throat, fires mm -hmm. lick up the sides of your face, and within him you see the demonic energies uh, roiling behind his eyes have mm. telekinetically thrown you against this wall. So, no longer have this. How, how unfortunate. Perhaps this reunion was a mistake after all. I have little time and more pressing matters to attend. But I certainly wouldn't want you sticking your nose in where it does not belong. We don't need to have any sort of grandiose ideas of a vendetta being pressed against someone such as myself now, could we? I think he, like, starts twisting his hand back and forth, and you feel the weight pressing around your throat and twisting your head back and forth. I think maybe just a brief snap will be all we need to be finished and have the closure upon our relationship I need for my poor heart. Pause. Yes. Just a second. Um... I think I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to say it anyway. There isn't any way to use Misty Step on one, more than one person. No. Is there? There is not. Well, Willemie yeah. can, because she's got special abilities that let her do that. <gasps> okay. And pause. So you are standing nearby, Ness, and you hear something bad happening. And there's a thud, and Thul's voice yeah. quiets. Um, the blade is, like, there at your side. Uh, Phil, uh, just mm -hmm. that energy, but you're kind of your arms are kind of trapped there in the moment. Um, you are very close to dying in this moment. We will now enter a new thing that I have added to our campaign. Oh it is called a deadly gambit. You have to reach a certain amount of successes based on actions that you take, the difficulties mm -hmm. of which will be decided by what you do in order to come out on top of a circumstance, and if you reach enough failures, something very bad will happen. Sometimes, death. Other people can assist you if they're around, things like that. So I'm going to start off with, you need to reach three successes in order to get out of his grasp and potentially find a way away. And three failures, and he will kill you. So, first off, what do you do in this moment? You are currently relatively helpless. Um, you do have allies nearby. You can try to call on them if you knew they were there. You do know mm -hmm. that Mamzelle and the guards are there. Uh, do I have the ability to speak? You, eh, you know that he has enough hubris he wouldn't stop you from speaking. Um, so it would be Inferno's voice speaking in the lower register just this time of... You... The, I think what the, we remember that Valyrian is vain and wants to brag mm -hmm. and just is going to try to play on that vanity 
uh, to just see like what, maybe not the full plan, but where they are inevitably going. Okay. Um, just say, all this time, <sighs> what is it that you want? You already did things to Elturel. <laughs> what do I want now? Why, the same thing I wanted before. Same reason they brought me here now. My master needs additional strength for their armies in hell. If we bring Baldur's Gate, oh, that's twice the souls for the charge. Simple as that. Does that satisfy your curiosity? With everything you've done before and with the aid your father has provided me, I am sure I will meet you in Avernus later anyway, and we can continue this conversation. It doesn't matter if you die here. <laughs> you will still not be free of me today. Uh, I think Inferno would then just say, with the blade kind of hovering off at a distance, um, no. I was free of you when you sold me to that devil and will throw the blade because he doesn't need uh, right. at him Give me an just to roll. break his concentration. Yeah, let's do it. So while that is happening, though, from the beginning of all of that, can mm -hmm. I start sneaking in? I'm sorry. I didn't know where to interrupt in this particular no, like, that's... initiative thing. That's fine. So uh, you're going to give me a stealth check as you try to sneak into the, the section. They are distracted at the moment. That's what I was hoping for. That is a 23. 23. His AC is 21. Congratulations. Hey! You hit. Uh, Ness, would you like to use an uh, inspiration? Does your, does your party yep. want to allow you to use I feel that? you should. Th I'm I would okay like with that. that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hearing no objections. Roll one more time. I'm scared. 17. Excellent. Much better. Uh, with his current distractions in place, Oof. he is going to notice you. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, That's okay. I don't know how to use any of my abilities. They're all like stealth based and like my rogue actions and effects. But every time I try to look at the thing that makes it so that I can see what they do, it keeps procking them. Which one are you talking about? There, well, one of them I disappeared while I was trying to look. So it says new spell, rogue action, and effects, which is not helpful. And then I also have insightful fighting. And then, of course, I know what sneak attack is. But I don't know what insightful fighting is. So, Or if it would help me with my sneaking. Can you see the no. thing I just shared? Yes. Me? So that's what insightful fighting is. Okay. Uh, you rolled. What was the damage you caused? Oh, uh, I would have done a d6. Plus four. <laughs> Doesn't matter what damage you do here. Um, you did cause damage to him. He looks surprised because your uh, impact actually seems to break through some of his defenses. And you break his concentration. Uh, so suddenly the spell that was holding you in, in grips uh, allows you to drop. You've gotten one success there. Ness, how do you wish to try to aid him? You do sneak into the room, but he turns and notices you, so now his attention is diverted. Um, go ahead and tell me what you do. I don't know what that means. You said his attention was diverted after to... he got stabbed? or Sorry, go ahead. He got stabbed. Uh, at the same time he was stabbed, he has now noticed you as well, so you're no longer sneaking okay. up on him. So he got now stabbed he's... and then noticed? Yes. Okay. Can I use insightful fighting your right or wisdom check so I know what the this guy is? Uh, yeah, you could you could give me an insightful fighting roll for this. So this is a wisdom insight check. So give me an insight check, and he's going to use a deception to try to combat it. He gets a thirteen. So be a thirteen. Mm. Ooh. That twenty. Woo. Okay, so you can use your sneak attacks even if you don't have advantage. Um, you get some details on how his tactics are going to work, a little bit of knowledge into him. So this individual, um, you can tell that he is bound to some sort of infernal patron. You believe he's a warlock. Um, 
you recognize that he's going to require his hands and his mouth <laughs> in order to do a lot of what he's doing. Um, you also recognize that in close combat, he's probably not super effective. So you remember the uh, magical dagger that I found off yeah. Shit's McGee? Mm-hmm. I would like to take and do a shadow step right up to the top, like his face, and then shove the dagger into his mouth. <laughs> All right, give me an attack roll with, uh, I'll give you advantage. That was surprising enough. Yeah, no one expected that. <laughs> uh, what am I rolling? So you're going to roll the attack? attack of, just to roll the attack of one of your regular daggers for now, and then do it with advantage. Oh my God. How is it that, oh, there's actions. Okay. Dagger. Do, 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 do. primary. Oh, it's too good. You know what, Marquis? Okay. The universe wants me to help you. Critical Thanks. hit. Uh, go ahead and roll for damage. What 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 do I roll for damage? So it's just going to be your dagger damage, but it's it's got a little bit more to it with this particular dagger. That's so that is. Uh, no, I did it. I'm okay. Yeah, for plus the sneak attack, right? Yes, plus the sneak attack. So we're gonna add. So actually, four d six. Yeah. What? Just roll four d six. Four d six. Four d six is more. If you in fifth. Woo! Come on! Uh, that is 18 plus. Okay, uh, you surprise you surprise him. Um, hit him in the face. I'm gonna say with two crits in a row. And hit him in the face. And in his mouth. Well, he like turned, and you see like a gouge just appear across the edge of his cheek, and he's like, "Why so serious?" I don't have time for this. He looks over at both of you. He glares daggers at at Thul and says, "Elian, this is not the last time we will be having a conversation." And there's just a puff as he disappears. Mm. Sulfuric uh, smoke hits you, and then, and then he's gone. Oh, it's so eggy. Mm. Are you okay? It's not my name. What's not your name? Elian Lightward died the day he sold him to a devil. There is no more alien. That is not my name. Okay, that's not your name. Where do we go now? He won't come back. No, his plans are his plans are on Boulder's Gate. He helped drag Elturel to hell, and now he's going to try and drag Baldur's Gate into hell as well. Should we... And um, Nessus actually is going to come up and get close and put her hand on your shoulder. Should we not fucking let that happen? I am going to kill that man. But I'll help. But we might need to save a city first. Sounds like a good plan. Perhaps if we're lucky, we can do both. Uh, I hope you're lucky then. So mm. he escaped, he left. It's the middle of the evening. We are Where's at my dagger. The dagger went with him. It was in his face. Oh, no! It was in his face? It was in his face, yeah. You went right through the side of his jaw and it stuck there. See, I missed a golden opportunity to blink in Misty Sep and say, in your face, motherfucker, and then but <laughs> It's okay. You so, you had to insightful fighting first. So yeah, yeah. I have a question to ask the crew. I have a mm. just a couple more scenes to do. They won't take longer than thirty minutes. Do we want to continue, or do we want to save them for next game? I'll see you next game if you guys want to keep going. That's cool. I'm happy though. <laughs> <laughs> well, always got leave your things camera to do. On. Leave the camera sure, on, but just I, uh... <laughs> we can pick it up next week. Okay. Okay. Um, I, won't, I won't feel bad. Benny's going to sleep anyway. Like, <laughs> let that dog go to bed. And is getting left behind. <laughs> so we will pick up next week. Uh, next week. Next game, which is in two weeks. 
with Valencine and then Willamis, and then everybody meets up for the first time since session one, two, one? I don't know. Whatever session it was. Two. Uh, all right. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you've had a great time. Uh, we're just going to say our farewells uh, one at a time here with the group, as usual. We're going to start off this time with uh, Gwen. You are up first. Give us your your final thoughts. All right. Uh, again, hello, everybody. Gwen also known as Big Sherry, often found over there in chat, and every other Saturday, right here, having fun as our friendly neighborhood bard. Um, This was a blast, and oh my god, that last scene was just <laughs> so good! I, I can't wait. Alright, Shannon, your turn. Yeah, hi, Shannon. Uh, Glitz and Gamer uh, in some of the media spaces uh, and Shannon in the real life and Ness today. That was fun. He's still not my friend, but, you know, that doesn't mean I'm not going to fuck shit up for a, a, a co-worker. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no, that was super awesome. I am having a great time playing with all y'all. And, yeah, thanks for being here. Next. Clint, your turn. Yeah, I'm Clint, also known as Clinked. Um, man, this has been such a fun episode of just getting to see people really show who they are and, and uh, gosh, so talented. And like sitting here just soaking all this in and be like, man, this is so fun. So, no, this is amazing. And I'm glad you guys get to see this incredible show. <laughs> Marquise, your turn. Hi, everybody. I'm Marquise. Uh, my whole usual spiel. Um, yeah, I am. I love that name, by the way. That is great. Thank you. It is a beautiful name. Well. Uh, <laughs> but fuck that guy. Um, <laughs> so you can catch me here Wednesdays. Every, well, every Wednesday that co coincides with this one. But uh, yeah, where we play Masks, this game, and on years also Ballad of the Seven Dice, where I play Catboy Megas trying to escape a video game. Mm -hmm. So... Thank you, Lol. Say goodbye. Hi, my name's Lol. I play Bennings. Bennings is finally starting to settle into the group of misfits he finds himself surrounded in. Um, starting to get a little attached and open up a little more about who he sort of is. At least to some people, the ones who fucking read him every time he says something. <laughs> the Morris mess. He can't lie to y'all at all, apparently. He fails every time. Um, anyway, good session. Can't wait to see where we go. Um, hopefully we run into Mr. Knife Face again. Mr. Knife Face, that's his nickname now. Uh, Brian. Hey, everybody. I'm Atomic, a.k.a. Brian. Um, you can find me here on this channel, as well as a couple of upcoming podcast projects that I have in production right now. But anyway, uh, I think with Stell is kind of all over the place, uh, but actually has uh, multiple things to focus on right now. Got some really good news, which is kind of what's allowing them to move forward and just really excited to, well, in their mind, they're excited to meet up with the group to be like, I have some shit to tell, let, let alone uh, knowing that the group is like, yeah, that's great. We already know a lot of stuff right now, so sit down. But in their mind, they're, they're like, oh, I'm going to blow everyone's head off this time with all this news I have. <laughs> That'll be great. I'm getting to meet up and share news. I do have to say one thing. Valerian is immune to non-magical weapons, so the fact that both of you had <laughs> those options was kind of insane. You otherwise wouldn't Hopefully, have been yeah. able to do any damage to him at all. All right, everybody. With our powers combined. <laughs> Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you all uh, next time. Next game is going to be the 8th of June. Goodbye. Good night. <laughs>